Sports Medicine Team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field, dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it, certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes, and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors Give your home the curb appeal it deserves and trust Kurt's Mio to power wash your home. Additional services include concrete sealing, deck and fence cleaning, driveway replacement, and stamped concrete. Just head on over to KurtzMio.com, request your virtual quote, and use the code Summit City for 15% off all power washing services today. That's KurtzMio.com, supporting the youth of Fort Wayne. Looking for a way to naturally aid in soothing aches, pains, and sore muscles and reduce inflammation from the skin? Want a relief in minutes? Try Alleviate. Contact Hillary Didier for details. You can find her at didier.hillary at gmail.com or call her at 260-312-1599. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Parkview Ortho Express, located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, gives you access to quick care and orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Parkview Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. Developing athletes to be foundationally strong. Healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any age, any skill level. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life.
Thank you for supporting Summit City Sports. For the last several years, we've provided the Fort Wayne community and beyond with coverage of a variety of sports, thanks to our title sponsorship from Parkview Sports Medicine. Since we began in 2015, our annual budget has covered the cost of videographers and commentators to over 300 plus games each year. New equipment and maintenance of that equipment, along with increased broadcast rights fees from the IHSAA. This season, we're reaching out to friends, families, and local businesses for additional sponsorships and donations. You can help us grow and get coverage to your favorite team or sport. A Summit City Sports sponsorship or donation will help make that happen. We have the goal of bringing fans live stream games of every SAC game we cover. With the additional funds, we'd invest in mobile internet devices, allowing us to bring our supporters every SAC conference football and boys and girls basketball games live, as well as more coverage for sports like cross country, tennis, golf, swimming, wrestling, track and field, baseball, and softball. For more information on sponsorships or how to donate, visit summitcitysports.com. here on Redeemer Radio broadcasting live from Eastside High School tonight. It is the Eastside Blazers hosting the Bishop Lures Knights and we are getting ready for a cold, wet contest here. The gridiron is, uh, well, it's in a condition <laughs> and uh, we are glad to be with you here. Thanks so ma very much for welcoming into your homes and your cars and we are really looking forward to sectional round two action tonight between the Knights and the Blazers. We've got a, an extended uh, pregame show tonight, so before we get started with that, we're going to send it back to the station for a little break and an opening prayer. Stick around, folks. This is Playoff Football right here on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors for every victory, for every highlight, for every team in the Summit Athletic Conference, we've got you covered. Like, follow, and subscribe for all the latest. Sponsor Parish Orthodontics. Doctors Brandon and Laura Parish of Parish Orthodontics are the Game of the Week sponsor. Parish Orthodontics offers orthodontics for all ages with seven locations around the Fort Wayne area. If you want a beautiful smile for a lifetime, check out parishorthodontics.com. 
And again, folks, in case you're just joining us, we are broadcasting live from Butler, Indiana, where it is sectional two playoff action here between the Bishop Lures Knights and the East Side Blazers. Alongside with Mike Geely, I'm Sean McBride. We've got a host of uh, uh, names and uh, voices to bring you tonight from this sectional two action and a lot to talk about. So we're going to jump right into it. My Julie, again, this is a, um, a Class 2A sectional contest between the, the Knights and Eastside. I know a lot of our uh, listeners probably don't know a whole lot about Eastside, and we've got a very special guest down on the sidelines, part of the Redeemer Radio broadcast team, that will talk about that as well. Uh, but we've got some keys to victory, some uh, some things to talk about with the Bishop Lures Knights from a player personnel perspective and whatnot. Um, but we also... I think we need to make some time for the national anthem as well. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. so we're going to get to you in just moments here, Mike. Okay. But again, folks, in case you are just joining us, remember you can uh, listen uh, live on 106.3 FM and around the world at RedeemerRadio.com and just click on that Listen Live button. We also thank Summit City Sports for being out here in uh, Butler tonight up on top of the Crow's Nest bringing you live video coverage as well. And uh, you can go to the YouTube uh, application and check on Summit City Sports and watch live uh, this sectional two contest between the East Side Blazers and the Bishop Lures Knights. Also, folks, our media sponsor this week is Redeemer, uh, excuse me, Dr. Adam Osinga of Northeast Chiropractic Center. They are our sports media sponsor. Northeast Chiropractic Center is a patient-centered office that focuses on staying well through chiropractic, massage, exercise, and functional medicine. Remember to check out every strategy, play, and halftime interview at youtube.com slash Redeemer Radio. And again, it's always a tricky thing here trying to time while we talk and not talk with the National Anthem because we really don't know exactly when that is coming up, but we do think it's going to be in mere moments. Both starting lineups have been introduced here at east side and uh, we do have results of the pregame coin toss but we'll get to that a little bit later and uh, just some observations as well from this beautiful press box a couple things up here in butler the hospitality here has been fantastic um, great facilities here uh, the real condition or concern is the field uh, looking from the press box here there is some obvious wear and tear on this natural playing surface will it be a factor tonight we think, of course, it will, but how much is always the question. And uh, we'll talk about that in the moments to come as well. But a cold, cold night here. I think the last time I checked, 29 degrees here in Butler, Indiana. Uh, looking at Old Glory, it's uh, kind of limp right now. So wind right now, at least at the start of the game, probably not too much of a factor. And we're going to keep an eye on that as we traverse through the, um, through the contest as well. And we'll talk about... The rest of the sports crew tonight down on the sidelines tonight we've got Corey kitchen you know Corey's name is he is the color commentator for the bishop dwinger saints but some fun facts Corey was actually a native of this uh this high school was a starting quarterback back in the day and has also been a coach for both of these teams quarterbacks over at ops so he has a very intimate knowledge of this program and we thought we put him in the trunk and bring him with us tonight. So that's exactly what we did. So Corey is going to be joining us here in mere moments and throughout the game as our sideline reporter, giving us some very um, much needed and uh, great insights from down on the field as the contest happens and really gives us an insight into this east side program. Again, we kind of talked about it. We don't know too much about the Blazers here. Um, as we really in the SAC don't get to see a lot of these kids up here, uh, only maybe when it comes down to postseason play. So it's a good time to, uh, to introduce the Eastside Blazers as we have time to do that. And uh, again, taking a look out onto the field right now, the Bishop Lures Knights have taken the field. And we're waiting for the Eastside Blazers, but it sounds to me like it's time for the National Anthem, so we're going to go ahead and cue that up.
All right, Mike All right. G. Now, let's get down to business, sir. We've got a lot of keys to victory to talk about, and we're going to check off with you, and we're also going to get uh, Corey Kitchen involved in this conversation here as we've got a little under two minutes to go here. They may reset the clock, but uh, what's jumping out at you? What are some good storylines? What are we talking about tonight with well, the uh, Bishop Lewis? It Knight? is certainly great to be here with you tonight, Sean, and we talked about it last week. You know, the new season started last week. Both these teams are 1-0 and now here in the postseason. Bishop Lures comes in as the leader in the state for playoff wins with a 132 and 25 record, uh, five more than Bishop Chatard, who sits in second place in the state and 11 state championships. But you know what? None of that really matters unless they win tonight. The key stat for the Knights: If I told you they had a three-headed rushing attack that averages 9.6, 5.9, and 4.8 yards per carry, that's going to tell you that combined those 1,188 yards, the Knights need to establish the run early and pound it at, at, at this team tonight as they combine for 6.1 yards per carry. So look for them to try to establish that run. When they're not running, they're going to be looking at those high percentage passes, the rocket passes, the slants. And, and most importantly, coming out of last week's game, don't beat yourself early. Stay clean. Stay penalty free. Both teams, that's been an emphasis all week. Eastside ran into some same problems last week with nine penalties in that game. And Coach Mason, for them, I know. Uh, has made an emphasis on that, but Corey probably has more to talk about with that. Yeah, and unfortunately, I don't know that we have too much time here, Corey. I apologize about that, but Tom Mason in the third year comes into this season with an 8-2 and two record. What do you have for us down on the field, Corey Kitchen? Yeah, as you mentioned, Sean, 8-2 and two and a lot of success in the Northeast Corner Conference, but they have not had a lot of success in the playoffs, have the Eastside Blazers over the years. You mentioned the 132 games that the Lures Knights have won and 11 state championships. Well, Eastside has won 18 total playoff games in school history and only played in one sectional final, having never won one. So I think that's a big issue for the Blazers in, in playing such a story tradition as the Bishop Lures Knights and in talking to coach Mason this week he also mentioned his big concern is is the speed they don't see SAC speed in the NECC and he's concerned about being able to contain the athletes of the Bishop Lures Knights. Corey before this game kicks off we see the ceremonial uh, coin toss here going to ask you that a little bit what can we expect on offense from east side what kind of a uh, scheme do they run? They're a spread scheme when they want to run first they'll run some option uh, their quarterback, sophomore Laban Davis, is their trigger man. Uh, the entire offense runs through him. He's got uh, nearly uh, nearly 600 yards of rushing. He's got over 1,200 yards of passing. Uh, accounted for 21 total touchdowns has Laban Davis, and uh, and he's the key. He's the trigger to their offensive uh, firepower. Uh, final question there for Aria Corey as well. The coin toss and field conditions. We talked about a little earlier, but what do you have for us? Yeah, the, the Blazers won the toss. They've deferred. They'll be kicking towards the scoreboard, which is uh, kicking towards the north here at Eastside Stadium. And uh, the field conditions are rough. We are, uh, we're talking about a lot of moisture. Uh, there's not great footing. Uh, you mentioned it earlier, Sean, that, uh, that they've made some tracks already just from warm-ups. So it's, it's definitely going to be a factor as this game goes on. And that's really going to be a factor because both defenses are strong up the middle and both teams are going to try to expose and get to the edge. And that will be a factor if the field is in that kind of condition. We've got two sophomore quarterbacks as field generals today here at this contest, and that in itself is a great storyline as well. And, uh, again, Corey has coached both of these guys in the offseason, and so we can talk about a little bit later on uh, some of the contrasts and some of the things we think uh, we could probably see. But um, it looks like Eastside is preparing to kick this one away. And we are moments away from the start of sectional two playoffs here in Butler, Indiana, as the Eastside Blazers get ready to kick this one off going to be interesting to see if they kick away to the to the Knights deep men Cam Hedgecock back there had a big game last week uh, with some great great job at wide receiver or are they going to do a little pooch or onside kick here potentially right. to catch the Knights by surprise Michael Geiger number three is preparing to launch this one from the 40 using the left hash mark looks like is that Hale back there along with Cam Hedgecock yes, as well is. all right CJ Hale and here we go Kick is in the air. It's a line drive, end over end kick. Picked up on the hop at about the 16 yard line. Gets to the 25. Gets around the edge. Tries to go north and south. Is hit and dropped near the 30 yard line. Is Cam Hedgecock. And that's where the Bishop Lewis Knights will start on offense. First and 10 from about their own 30. Again, they are led by number 14, Carson Clark. He's a sophomore quarterback coming in at 5'11, 137. And uh, he does have a playoff victory under his belt. 
He was not the starting quarterback to begin this season, but uh, we've seen him grown up right here on the gridiron. We sure have, and, and last week with his feet, he had a couple of really nice runs. Single setback. Clark looks over the defense, two wide outs to the left side. Man in motion around, that's Berkmeyer. They fake to him, he looks to throw on first down, throws, outlet pass, he's got a man and a block. 35-40, 45-50, looking for some room. Breaking a tackle finally, and a flag comes out late. He gets into east side territory, down about the 47-yard line. Excellent job by the offensive line, especially the left side, led by uh, senior Alex Workman and Foster Johnson as they got into an open field. But the flag there late in the play is going to be holding against the Knights. Against the Bishop Lewis Knights, I believe it was a downfield block that was held too long and so that will be should from still the, be a first down. Exactly. From the end of the play, which was again at the east side 48 yard line, they will take it back into Bishop Lewis territory and mark it again at the uh, Bishop Lewis 48. Still a first and ten. Great play there by the Knights. Kind of open things up. Beautiful and, job um, by Ramon Anderson, starting running back. Had a big yeah. game last week and uh, got, got him moving north-south tonight right away. Two wideouts to the right side, one left. Man in motion is Berkmeyer. And again, now again, get to Ramon Anderson through the middle, squirts through, and somehow he was able to find some positive yards. Takes it down to the 49-yard line of east side. East side's not big up front, Sean, but they've got some muscle in there, and they stay low to the ground, and they're going to present some problems for the Knights' offense. But we got to establish – the Knights have to establish an inside run game to be able to bust it outside. Call that a game to three. Brings up second and seven. Here's a snap. He looks to throw on second down. Fires to the flats. He's got a man. Stepped in front of Ooh. nearly picked, but dropped. Great jump on the ball that time. I believe that was Gegner. Geiger, excuse me, number three from his uh, corner position. Going to his favorite target last week, Hedgecock, and, uh, the, you know, it was a ball out in the flats, and that was close. So an incomplete pass brings up a third and seven for Bishop Lewis. Moving right to left on your radio dial. Ball at the 49-yard line of east side. Two wide outs to the right side, one wide left. Ball in the middle of the field. Berkmeyer again in motion. They fake it to him. Go to Anderson. He slips. Was able to get the handoff in the backfield. Swarmed over and stopped. Boy, we see footing being an issue already early here, Sean, as yeah. the Knights tried to get outside over around right end and uh, a lot of slipping and sliding going on out there early. That was a tackle uh, for loss of one yard. And they placed the ball right at the 50-yard line and a, uh, a drive killer that time for the Bishop Lewers Knights as they will kick on fourth and eight. That's Ben Jennings back there, number 10. That's correct. To punt the ball away. He'll launch from about the 38, 39-yard line. Beautiful snap. Steps into it. Launches from the 40. High, high, high short kick. Coming down and taking a Bishop Lures uh, sideways bounce. Stops at about the 20-yard line. And that's going to do it for the opening drive for the Bishop Lures Knights. The east side defense holds. And uh, here come the east side Blazers on offense. We talked about him already. Laban Davis, he is a playmaker. Wearing number five for the men in green. He is also a sophomore quarterback, checking in at 5'10", 165. And, um, and Mike, would you call this a, a run-heavy team? Yeah, it absolutely is. They like the triple option. They've got three running backs, all uh, 350 yards or more. So uh, look for them to r establish the run early. Single setback, twins right, twins left. Here's a give through the middle. Looking first for Moon, patient run there, gets to the line of scrimmage, falling forward for one, maybe two. Nice tackle there by starting defensive tackle senior Luke Miller coming off his block and making a nice stick and holding him to just two-yard gain. So we talked about the uh, the three running backs. That was uh, the first one, Ethan Farnsworth, number 26. We'll also see Matt Firestein, number 24, and a freshman also, number 34, Dax Holman. Shows some very impressive skills for such a young lad. All right, so gain of two that time brings up second and eight. Blitz shown. Here's a snap. Give to the first man through. Swarmed over and stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Not a real big push that time by the O-line. Maybe a gain of another yard. You're going to see a lot of that tonight uh, talking to the Lures coaching staff. They're going to try to blitz this sophomore quarterback and come at him from a lot of different angles. Uh, he definitely has a, is a, a threat to run and a threat to throw, so the Knights want to keep him off edge. Rick Tannis and Krieger up front for the Bishop Lures Knights, along with, I believe that's Luke Miller. That's correct. All right. On third and six, man in motion out of the uh, short side, looking to throw screens it. He's got a man. It's caught in the backfield, trying to escape, blasted, wow. and dropped. 
Excellent job there by the Knights. The first man uh, got a good hit on him, knocked him off his track, and then three other Knights were there. Uh, looked like the play was setting up well, but the Knights closed on it quickly. Now, interestingly enough, too, uh, Laban Davis, what we've seen previously on film is that uh, he will stay in in kind of a, uh, a deep uh, shotgun and then uh, just try and kick the ball away. That so, is correct. Yeah, let's see what they do here. On fourth and long, he's looking to punt. Steps. Oh, Block it's blocked it. at the line. Oh, no, touched oh, by the touched, Knights. And Knights it's a scrum it. near the 30-yard line. It looks like the Knights have it, but no official call yet. Yes, there it is. The Knights have it at the east side 30-yard line. The coaching staff has worked on that all week, Sean. They uh, wanted to press the A-gaps, bring some pressure from the inside. The center is live in play because the quarterback is at uh, offensive play depth, so they do not have to stay off the center like you would in a normal punt formation. The Knights brought the pressure up the middle. I'm guessing it was Burkmeyer, but I don't have a, I don't know for yeah, sure. Yeah, it was got a big scrum there. But, uh, again, very successful with special teams play there for Bishop Lures. And now they are back in business at the east side 30-yard line with a fresh set of downs. Two wideouts to the right side, including Burkmeyer in the slot. Carson from the shotgun looks to throw, pumps, fires, left side, He's got single coverage. He's oh over the head of a wide open Cam Hedgecock. Had his man beat on an inside move, busted to the corner route. He was wide open. Unfortunately, he just couldn't pull the trigger and, and hit him in stride. So uh, great play call there by Coach Stansky. And mm -hmm. all right, so second and ten now for the Knights. Again, same formation. Clark looks over the defense, awaiting the snap. And here it is. Here's a give through the middle counter. He's got some room and runs forward to about the 25-yard line is number 20 for the um, Ramon Anderson, Bishop Lures Knights. What do you have for us, Corey Kitchen, from the sideline? Well, I think Mike mentioned it, and uh, their ability to get outside on that double move, outside the hash marks is the best area of the football field from a field condition standpoint. Yeah. So that's yeah. they, they took advantage of that. Good point. All right, third and five coming up for Bishop Lures after that Ramon Anderson run. Here is a snap. Again, give to Ramon Anderson. Breaks it outside to the right side. Won't find the edge. Gets sit in the middle, and he is dropped for a huge tackle for loss. Great penetrating defense that time by east side. You know, the Knights uh, were looking good on a couple of those inside run plays, but have yet to establish that outside run game, and the field conditions are playing into that. And now let's see what happens here because it is now fourth and nine, but they are deep into, uh, well, they are into east side territory. I don't know how deep. At the 30-yard line, 29-yard line. Offense on the yeah, field. Yeah, the offense remains on the field. On fourth and nine, huge conversion here if they pull it off. Two wide outs to the left, one wide right. Here's a snap. He looks to throw. Looking right, looking, 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 firing. He's got a man, and it nice. is caught inside the 10 and out of bounds for a huge, huge catch. Excellent catch there by Scotty Van Landingham. Great job by the offensive line. Carson had uh, – uh, he. Uh, had all kinds of time back there, was able to scan the field, and he found him down in the corner. Yes, he did. So a nice conversion. That brings up a first and goal for Bishop Lewis with 7-10 remaining here in the first quarter. The ball is resting at the 7-yard line. Berkmeyer in motion to the left side. Again, give to the tailback through the middle. Nice push. Let's see forward progress. Should be around the 5. Maybe just shy of the 5. We'll call it the 6-yard line. Gain of 1. What a key call there on fourth down. And they got more than the needed 10 yards, that's for sure. But uh, second and goal, we'll see what the Knights can do here. Hale checks in for the Knights. As Jaden Hill checks out as well. And now Hill will check back in. Berkmeyer to the sidelines. Yep. All right, so they break cuddle with 10 seconds to go on the play clock. Two wide outs left, one wide right. Single set back, Hale. Now a man in motion. Is Ramon Anderson. Here's a snap. Quarterback decides to keep it through the middle. Spinning out of one. Was that a Wildcat? That was, was that a Wildcat. Cam Hedgecock, Cam Hedgecock okay. in the Wildcat. That's wow. correct, Sean. Okay, so Hedgecock gets down to about the three-yard line. As they fake the jet sweep and Cam Hedgecock decides to take it through the middle. Does get some positive yards, and that's going to bring up a third and goal now from the four-yard line. That's the first time for, the look, uh, for that look for the Knights all season. Let's see if they try this one again. As Carson Clark will be a wide out on the far side left. Cam Hedgecock acting as your quarterback now. Man in motion coming across the line. Here's a snap. They fake the just Go to the right. No, they do pitch it. He's looking for some room. He's got it. Oh, a got flag, a flag comes out. So Ramon Anderson's touchdown may be coming back. 
So jet sweep left is called back. This is going to be holding against the Bishop Lures Knights a red zone penalty. Thrown right at the line of scrimmage somewhere on the interior. I didn't get a chance to pick up on exactly where that happened. That's, uh, that's a deal breaker because Ramon was able to get to the edge and, and uh, power his way into the end zone. But that's coming back. Yeah. Johnny Sewell now checks in for the Bishop Lures Knights. And now, again, they're really hard up against it because they can't get a first down. It was first and goal situation before. After the penalty, they move it back out to the 15-yard line. So now it's third and goal from the 15-yard line of east side with 542 remaining here in the first quarter. Still zeros on the scoreboard. And Bishop Lures has two downs to try and make this count. Two wide outs to the left side, one wide right. Clark from the shotgun looks to throw. Looks to throw. Still has time. Decides to... Oh, he tries to get outside and slips and falls. Lost his footing as he was looking to tuck the ball and maybe make a move around right end. Uh, looked like maybe he had Johnny Sewell in the corner of the end zone, but uh, unfortunately by the time he tried to pull back up, he just lost his footing and down he went. All right, so now the ball is at the 21-yard line, and they're going to try and chip this one in. Field goal attempt here. Carter Drake. That is correct. As long as this year is 37 yards, this one's going to be right at about that same mark, is it not? Yeah, it surely will. About a 37-yarder here. Here's the snap, the hold, the kick. It's a little low. Will it make it? It will not. No good. So the drive stalls and no points on the board so far for either squad as the Bishop Lures Knights on a couple of uh, really tough plays can't come up with a score. Corey Kitchen, what do you have for us? Well, a week ago, the Eastside Blazers played played at Woodland and had a very similar situation in the first half of that game where they were able to hold on a goal-to-go situation and not allow any points to those Woodland Warriors, and it kind of sparked them, and I'm sure they're hoping for that tonight. All right, Eastside back on offense now. They place the ball at the 20-yard line. Laban Davis in the shotgun, give to the tailback, hit in the backfield and swarmed over and stuffed. Nice Big job penetrating there. defense by the Bishop Lu uh, Lures Knights. Will Derrick there, Ben Rectanis, Krieger, the whole front line was there, and linebackers. Knights playing in between the tackles on that play. Call that a loss of two back to the 18-yard line. Clock continuing to tick down. First quarter action. No scores yet by either squads. East side moving left to right on your radio dial. Split backs this time. Wide out left and right. Wing back to the right side. He's looking to throw. Steps up. Tries to throw. He's, he's stumbling. Down. He's down. Again, field conditions playing a major part in this contest as Laban Davis pulls a, uh, uh, a Clark, if yes. you will, trying yeah. to make some something happen in the backfield. Slips and falls. Krieger's going to get the credit, I think, there for the sack because he was the closest guy to him, but he yeah. was a couple yards away. Unfortunately, he was trying to roll left. And uh, very similar to what happened to the Lures quarterback. Lost his footing, and, and unfortunately down he went. So it's going to bring up third and very long. Third and very looks like third and 21 now. The ball now resting at the nine-yard line of east side. And they need to get out to the 30-yard line. Again, split backs from the shotgun. Pressure comes through the middle. Decides to keep it. Following blocks is the quarterback. He takes it out to about the 16, 17-yard line. Faithful asking for a late hit call there. Yeah, Did not get it. It's, uh, it was close. It was that close. was definitely yeah. close. I think uh, I got away with one there. So it's going to bring up fourth and long. But, again, I, you're not going to see a traditional pump formation if no. they stay true to form. Cam Hedgecock will be uh, back deep. Now he is still in east side territory, standing at about the 45-yard line. And remember on the previous punt, they did block this one. Now he is stepping back a little bit further than previously. Here's a snap. Oh, it's on the ground. Bottled. Kick is away and shanked. And it's going to take an east side bounce and trickle out of bounds in east side territory at the 41-yard line. Blazers were fortunate to get that one away. Boy, oh, boy. All right. Well, football fans, the St. Felix Catholic Center in Huntington, Indiana, offers one day an overnight retreat with over 70 rooms. Be just sure to visit Our Lady in her grotto and walk the 30 scenic acres. Check them out at sfcatholiccenter.com to learn more. Important drive for the Knights here. This is two drives in a row where we're started, where the Knights are starting in the Blazers' territory, and they need to be able to capitalize on this That's early. exactly right. The battle of field position so far clearly uh, being won by the Knights, but they haven't been able to do anything with it. Let's see what happens here. First and 10 from the Blazer 41-yard line. Here's a snap. 
Give to Ramon around the right side. He's got some room. Got some blocks. He's still on his feet at the 30. Finally wrangled down and stopped into the safety core at about the 27-yard line. Huge block out on the right side there by the senior tackle, Peter Suloff. And then when he got to the second level, there was trusty Nick Berkmeyer, who was in the slot, had a downfield block on the outside defensive back and sprung him for the additional yardage. Ramon Anderson finds the edge, and it's good enough for a first down. Inside the 30, down to the 27-yard line. Two men in the backfield with Clark. Two wide outs to the left side. Here's a snap. Again, give to the tailback. Finds nothing. Stood up and stuffed. Right away is Ramon Anderson. No movement there by the offensive line. Eastside did a great job of bringing pressure up the middle and nowhere for the Knights running back to run. So that's a loss of two that time. Back out to the 29-yard line. Brings up second and 12 with 2.14 remaining here in the first quarter. The Knights nine yards away from the red zone. Here is a snap. He's looking to throw on second down. Fires to the flats. Got his man. It's caught. Tries to make a move, and then going down is number 13 for the Bishop Lures Knights. Scotty Van Landingham with the catch and turn. Tried to get upfield, but unfortunately, as you said, Sean, he lost his footing and went down. Carson's got plenty of time back there. Good ability yeah. to scan the field, and that helps the young quarterback. And Van Landingham, he was able to get separation. You yes. know, so that, that's right. a good part of that one. So yes. that brings up third and about one and a half, maybe two yards. Second catch on the night for Scotty. On third and two, give to the tailback, trying to bounce his way through. He gets oh, the first out the of Moore through the seam. That's C.J. Hale with a huge run for the Knights inside the 10, down to about the 8-yard line. Nice trap play there by the Knights, opening up that seam, and he got to that second. Looked like he was going down, and he yeah. hit that second level and found another gear. He found some grass instead of yeah. some mud. <laughs> That's true, too. Yeah. All right, so first and goal again now for the Bishop Lures Knights as the ball is resting at the 8-yard line. One minute and 20 seconds remaining in the quarter. Personnel moving around. Going to be two wide outs to the left, one wide right. Split backs are now resetting. <coughs> From the shotgun, Clark gives a snap, gives the hail through the middle, pounding through that middle, driving backwards now is that east side defense. But he will have a yard, maybe two, down to about the seven. It's going to be up to the offensive line with uh, Workman, Johnson, Boudet, Rectanus, and Suloff to punch this one in here for the Knights. It's a couple of changes here at wide receiver. There's, looks like they're staying with Hale and the running back. New tight end that time is Hill, number 81. He's going to be uh, setting up on the right side of the line. Contrell Ash is in at fullback for the Knights. Here's a snap. Give to the tailback. And Ramon Anderson, again, trying that right side. They string him out. He won't get anything. Take him down outside the uh, the white lines. And that's going to be another tackle for loss or no gain. The Blazers are certainly tightening up their defense when the Knights get inside the 10-yard line. And uh, this is a critical play call here for the Knights. You don't want to be looking at fourth and long here, fourth no. and goal. And that's going to do it for our first quarter, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, the Bishop Lures Knights will be facing third and goal from the nine-yard line. Stick around. We're back in 60 seconds. You're listening to Playoff Football right here on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors for every victory, for every highlight, for every team in the Summit Athletic Conference, we've got you covered. Like, follow, and subscribe for all the latest. We are back to live action, getting ready to start the second quarter of action. Let's go down to the sidelines quickly and check in with Nick Ray. Well, guys, right now, uh, Snyder's beating Carroll 7-0. to zero. Homestead's down at Noblesville. That's going to be a late start, so we'll keep an eye on that one for us. Don't have a score yet. Bishop Dwanger over at Northside. I'm assuming that's 0-0, but we'll work on that. East Noble's beating DeKalb 21-0. to 
Um, other interesting game, probably the most interesting game for us here this evening is Prairie Heights is over at Fairfield. Right now, Fairfield's up 14-0. to Back up to you guys. On third and nine to start the second quarter are the Bishop Bluers Knights. From the shotgun, Clark looks to throw. He rolls, looks to fire, can't plant, and it's knocked away. Double coverage, triple coverage yeah. there by the Blazers on the late-breaking defensive back. And really, the, uh, the Blazers had the best opportunity to pick that there, and uh, lucky for the Knights that uh, fell incomplete. And again, we see the field conditions being a factor here for the guys uh, trying to move the ball downfield on really both sides of the ball. Uh, again, he tried to uh, plant and throw that, and his back foot went out from underneath him, and uh, so just threw an incomplete pass. Now we see Carter Drake coming on to try and chip this one in from uh, the 16, so about the uh, 26-yarder. Good snap, good hold by Burkmeyer. The kick is up, and is it long enough? It is good. What an amazing kick. Wow. He fell as he <laughs> fell, followed through with no footing, no plant foot. He was on his back by the time the ball left his foot. Uh, he came into that one there, 5 of 12 for the year with the longest of 37. That's a huge kick for the Knights to put some points on the board. We've got a score here in Butler. 3 to 0 is your score. Bishop Lewers on top of the Blazers. We're back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Playoff Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. We are back to live action here in Butler, Indiana, where the Bishop Lures Knights are now on top of the uh, East Side Blazers, three to zero, with 11:52 to go here in the second quarter. Carter Drake in to kick this one away from the 40-yard line. High end over end kick, angling to the far side of the field, taken near the 15-yard line, and trying to slip and make a cut. And again, going down is the return man for the. Uh, for the Eastside Blazers, that's Breedemeyer, number one. He just can't make the cut, and it's affecting, again, both squads here tonight. Yeah, definitely neutralizing some of the speed on the field, and uh, the players have just got to learn to adjust to that and try to keep their cuts to a minimum. Six freshman football players on the field for the Knights on that kickoff team, and there was good coverage staying in their lanes and shut it down early. All right, so the uh, Blazers come out with Laban Davis, number five, as the quarterback, single setback. Wing back to the left side. Here's a snap. Gives it the first man through, looking for some room, driving the pile north. Going to be a big push out to about the 26-yard line. That was a couple yards in a cloud of mud right there, Sean, yeah. as they tried to root their way up through the middle. But uh, Ben Rectanis and uh, Nick Burkmeyer were there with a little help from Will Derrick. And so they're going to place that at about the 27-yard line. We'll call that a uh, gain of a long two, short three. Brings up second and seven now for the Blazers. Blazers wearing green uh, along with some gray pants. The Knights tonight wearing white with the w red trim and the black helmets. On second and seven. From the shotgun, blitz shown. Here's a snap. And he fakes play action. He's got pressure. He rolls out. He's still on his feet looking to throw. Takes a shot and is driven out of bounds for a very little game. Nice play there by Ben Jennings coming up. Uh, pressure applied up the middle by two blitzing Ramon Anderson and uh, Nick Berkmeyer, but it was Krieger that put the pressure on from the D-tackle position. But, boy, he's got some wheels around that corner there. Yeah. Kept his footing, and uh, good play by Jennings, or he's still running. So no gain on the play. Brings up uh, third and seven now. Again, the ball resting at their own 27-yard line. Blazers working right to left on your radio dial. Single setback as they spread things out now. Man in motion now to the left side. Blitz comes, picked up. Screen. Screen through the middle. And uh, he's dancing, looking for some room. Dragged down and stopped. Very little gain on the play, if any. Great job by the defense sniffing that one out. Excellent job there by, I believe it was number 80, Grant Brow, who's, uh, yeah, he definitely was him. He sniffed that one out. The defensive line but was broke through and... Uh, Great way to combat a defense that's putting a lot of pressure up the middle is the middle screen, but uh, Brow was there to make sure it didn't go anywhere. So another fourth and long situation here. We'll call it fourth and six for east side as Davis drops back into that short punt formation. He does get the kick away. Nice kick that time. 
Drives Hedgecock back. He picks it up on the roll. He's back at the 20, looking, looking. 25, makes a move, gets out of one tackle, has a wall. wall. 40, 45, flag comes out as he's tackled near the midfield stripe. It's going to go against the Knights. Probably a block in the back when he turned the corner there. That's always a tough block when you're in open field. The defender can turn his back on you. Uh, That can go either way. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to come against the Knights. Before this play, the Knights had two penalties for 20 yards. And again, yes, that is going to be a holding against Bishop Lures. Let's go down to the field and check in with our sideline reporter, Corey Kitchen. Actually, it looked like Jamie Johnson on a great block. And he planted his guy in the turf. And uh, and I think he got called for a hold when I got to be honest with you. I think it was just a great block. Hmm. All right, well. Again, they uh, they assess the penalty against the Bishop Lures Knights, and this is going to give them more yardage to overcome as they put the ball back at the 34-yard line. So that was about a 16-yard penalty as the return was near the midfield stripe. So, again, first and 10 for the Knights from their own 34. In the shotgun, here's a snap. Pressure comes. Here's a screen. Jailbreak through the middle. He's got some room. Johnson. Gets the first down and a more as he spins out of a tackle and finally taken out near the 47-yard line. Excellent second effort there by Jamie Johnson to make sure he gets the first down. Good spin move out of the catch. Uh, had a double screen going there and was able to get it to him, and he, he made the extra yards where it, where it was needed. So they move the chains once again to the Bishop Lures Knights near midfield. The ball is placed at the 48-yard line. Single setback for the Knights now. Carson Clark in the shotgun. Hard count. How many times are they going to pull him off sides? Good discipline by the Knights' offensive line there. Yeah. Hard count one time. Hard count second time. And then they finally throw the flag. So this will be off sides against east side. First penalty in the night, I think, for east side. And that was a big point of emphasis out of Coach Mason all week long. They were hurting themselves especially a lot last week on, on first down and early in the count on offense. And... Penalty free in the first quarter. 9.47 to go here in the second quarter. First and five now for the Bishop Lures Knights. Ball into east side territory. Here's a snap. He looks to throw. Quick screen onto the far side of the field. Good catch that time. Falling forward past the sticks. Depends upon the spot, but will be enough for another Bishop Lures first down. Trying to get a read on that, Mike. As to Jamie might, Johnson. Jamie Johnson on yeah. the catch. So yeah. the Knights, we talked about it early. Those high percentage passes, those rocket passes, the quick outs, the quick slants. Uh, nothing way far downfield there on that one, but uh, certainly effective for the first down. Ball is resting now at the east side, 40. Carson Clark on the shotgun again, looks to throw. Another quick screen. This time Hedgecock has it. This time he's wrapped up and dropped back at the 39-yard line. Forward progress will put him back at the 40, so no gain on that play. Two Blazers on the play there, and a third one came in strong at the end, and there was just nowhere to go. And, boy, the footing in, the, in that part of the field is really bad. Yeah, it truly is. All right. Now we see Brayton Coward, number five, in as the running back for the Bishop Lures Knights as Clark checks in with the sidelines. Second and ten now coming up from the 40-yard line. Working off the right hash mark. Here's a snap. Coward in the block. He looks to throw. Fires. And off target and incomplete. And again, that back foot, he just couldn't play it. No, he couldn't. And yeah. uh, he kind of put that one out there in between uh, Christian Fly and Berkmeyer. And uh, neither one could really make a move on the ball. Yeah, I think they looked at each other. Was that for you? Yeah. That, yeah it wasn't exactly. near me and it wasn't near you. So, well, again, they burned that one. That brings up a third and ten now for the Knights. Christian Fly, another weapon for the Knights we don't talk a lot about, but as you mentioned earlier, he started the year out at quarterback and has since moved to wide receiver, so he's one to keep an eye on tonight, both running and catching the ball. We've got a timeout on the field here, called by the officials. Yeah. Incomplete pass. We've got to reset the clock. Okay, so they'll put some additional time back on the clock. Again, your second quarter score, 3-0. to zero. The Bishop Lures Knights on top of east side here. We've got a little break in the action as the officials come over to the sidelines and see if they can't get that clock reset. Uh, Put some additional uh, time back on the clock due to the incomplete pass. So from 8.06, they'll go back to 8.23, and the Bishop Lures Knights will now face a third and 10 after the incomplete pass. Gives Coach Stansky a little extra time here, a little extended time out for the Knights to figure out what play we're going to go with in a third and long situation. Looks like they're going to stay with the trips package out on the left side with a single setback. Hedgecock on the near side. Single coverage. 
Yeah. Giving him some wide berth. At least a 10-yard uh, buffer there. Here's a snap. He looks to throw. Pressure comes. Fires. Oh. And it's nearly intercepted as it was kind of a jump ball situation. Uh, that was that was repeat 101 right there. Yeah. That was the exact same formation. Oh, I don't know about the formation, but the exact same pattern. And the ball ended up right in between, again, Christian Fly and Nick Berkmeyer. And neither one really knew who it was intended right. for. Berkmeyer went up for it and was uh, unsuccessful. So the punt team comes on for the Bishop Lures Knights. Corey Kitchen, what do you have for us? I'm a little surprised that they haven't attacked the single receiver side, as Mike was mentioning, and you were mentioning, Sean, 10 yards of cushion over there and probably a better athlete. I'm a little bit shocked that they haven't gone to that. Right. All right. Here is Ben Jennings' kick. The punt is away. High lofting ball. Fair catch called for inside the 10 at about the 6-yard line. So the punt is successful, and Eastside now has a lot of uh, territory to make up here as they will take over on offense with a first and 10 inside their own 10-yard line. Excellent coverage there by the Knights. He had nowhere to run once the ball came down. So uh, we'll see what happens here. They have It's been a game of field position all along. Eastside needs to flip the field, and I'm sure they hope to get a drive going here with eight minutes left to go in the half. And they need to find something because, you know, they, they've been able to move the ball a little bit, but not consistently. Right. They haven't really put a drive together yet. Let's see what they can do here with 8-12 remaining in the first half. Man in motion coming to the left side, resetting in the uh, H-back position. Here's a snap. Get to the tailback. Through the middle. Nice head down run, running north and south, falling forward, getting past the 10, out to about the 14-yard uh, line. Excellent job there by the offensive line. Getting a real good push up front, getting to the second level, and uh, good extra effort there by the running back. Call that a gain of six that time. Brings up second and four, maybe a long four. And here they come after the huddle. Again, split backs, quarterback in the shotgun. Two wideouts, one on each side. Berkmeyer shows blitz. They stuck, uh, hit the middle, and there's Berkmeyer again getting through and hitting him right at the line of scrimmage, pushing him back to about the 12-yard line. That was a linebacker party in the Blazer backfield. That was Berkmeyer <laughs> first with Brow and uh, Sewell soon to follow, and the three of them took him down. It's going to be a loss of one. Brings up third and five now for the uh, Blazers. Late player coming in for the Blazers that time, wearing number one. Knights staying in their base, 3-4 defense. Third and five. Man in motion, going to the far uh, close side. Here's a snap. He looks to throw, checks off. Rolling out, firing deep, and it's a high, high, high ball, and both the receiver and defender fall down, breaking for the ball, and it's an incomplete pass. Good pressure there by the defensive line. Made him roll right, made him get outside the pocket a little bit, put enough on the ball, but as you said, both guys came out of their break, and Ben Jennings not happy with his coverage because he felt like if he could have kept his feet, yeah. that ball was able to be intercepted. Yeah, it was a can of corn for sure, but again, when you're slipping and sliding <laughs> out there on the field, it's tough to come up with them. Yeah. Okay, so this one is fourth and five now from the 12-yard line. And it looks like Laven Davis will again go back in that extended shotgun position to punt this one away. Cam Hedgecock back to receive the punt. The kick is up, spinning. Tipped. And it was tipped. And they say to back away from it. And it's going to take an east side bounce and finally stop at the east side 45-yard line. Good pressure there by the Knights freshman, Devon Doty, with the pressure up the middle and got a got a finger or a hand on the ball there to just take a little bit off it. I surely did. I mean, yeah, that ball, the way it was tracking and, the, and how fast it was spinning, yeah. that wasn't a natural kick. No. So he surely got a paw on that one. And again, short field now for the Bishop Lures Knights. They come in already up 3-0. to zero. They've got 45 yards to go to hit Pater. Can they make it happen is the question with 6.38 to go in the first half. Plenty of time to both run and throw the ball. They had some early success running the ball, and lately they've been going to the air more than the run, so we'll see what Coach Stansky decides. Single setback, two wideouts left, two wideouts right. Calls for motion. Here he comes. Here's a snap. Fake the jet. Give to the man through the middle. First man through. That's Braden Coward. He gets inside the 45, down to about the 43-yard line. So we talked about on the out onset, there's three running backs for the Knights that carry the most of, most of the time for the Knights, all averaging 9.6, 5.9, and 4.8. And now we've seen all three in action. Coward that time with a gain of two, brings up second and eight. 
Same formation. Here's a snap. He looks to throw on second down. Throws to the flats. He's got a man. It's caught. That's Van Laningham, I believe, inside uh, the 40. Brody Glenn. Brody Glenn, 16, not 13. Okay, so Glenn with a nice catch. Sophomore wide receiver for the Knights. Lined up in the slot. Did a little out pattern there. Had enough cushion and nice, nice throw there. And it's just great. The uh, uniforms are getting muddier and muddier. <laughs> it's only going to get tougher <laughs> up here, isn't it? Yep. Trips to the left side on third and three now for the Knights. Hard count. Does not pull east side off. As Clark checks in with the sidelines. Plenty of time on the play clock. Now down to 10. Here's a snap. He looks to throw. Checking to the right side. Throwing over the middle this time. Going up for it. Tipped and no good. I'm not sure what Corey's thoughts are there, but uh, the Knights probably got to be careful on that hard count. There's a lot of motion out of the quarterback with his head in his hands, and that could get to be a borderline problem for the Knights. It. Yeah, Corey, you're a quarterback's coach. Yeah, uh, you know, and they're calling that more and more, as Mike knows. That's become a bigger and bigger deal throughout all levels of football. Uh, that guy's moving his head and, and trying to draw them off. Oftentimes they'll call it on the quarterback anymore. All right, so on fourth and three, the Bishop Lewis punt team comes on as the ball is resting at the 38-yard line of east side. And now we've got a flag on the play. It's going to be a delay game on the Knights. Yeah. Had trouble getting, uh, getting a couple players out onto the field into punt formation, did the Knights. So that's going to move them back five more yards. Uh, I was kind of wondering there with fourth and short on you know east side side of the field if we might be seeing a fake punt. I was but, just going to say exactly the yeah. same thing, Mike. I yeah, mean, your defense has been now. strong against this Blazer squad. Right, you got three yards to go. Ah, uh, what? Nah, that's, eight, eight yards is a whole different ball game. That's exactly right. Jennings in to punt this one away. Gets the kick off. It's a high kick, taken a little short that time. Looks like it hit a Bishop Lewers player. A flag comes nope. out. Marker, we're okay. It's okay. a marker. Just a marker. Yep. All right. Play. And that's where it will be touched up near the twenty yard line. Could have possibly got defensive interference, which is what you were seeing there, Sean. But yeah. I think he got himself out of the way just enough. Okay. Um, they're talking about it though, because I don't know if the punt returner had enough room to make a play on the ball if he wanted to. Right, and I'm sure that's exactly what they're discussing right now. So we'll let them talk about that right now and uh, go from there. Yep, here comes the flag. And a flag does Two come flags out. with wow. emphasis. Wow. <laughs> so apparently they talked about the, the, the penalty, but not who was going to actually throw the flag. Right. <laughs> okay. And this is, again, going against the Bishop Lures Knights. And uh, so far, clearly not playing mistake-free, as I believe that's their fourth penalty on the night. And that's a big yep. one here with 5.16 to go. It's going to greatly improve East Side's field position. Yeah. Corey, what do you have for us? Well, you might have noticed that the uh, head official went over to the assistant coach for the East Side Blazers to talk about whether they would accept the penalty, et cetera. And that's because Todd Mason, the head coach of the Blazers, is one of the few head coaches I've ever seen that is actually in the press box or up on top of the press box calling his own offense. He's not on the sideline. He's calling from up above. Wow. Fantastic. So they do accept the penalty. Yep, that they do. And they push the ball out to the 35-yard line, and that's where the Blazers will take over first and 10 with 5.16 to go here in the uh, second quarter. They're down 3-0 to zero against the Bishop Lures Knights. And let's see what they do here on that first down. Give to the second man through. Just a shot through the middle. Going nowhere. Wrapped up. There's about four black helmets swarming him at the 35. Led by senior Jacob Krieger coming off his block of the offensive tackle. And the D tackle made a nice stick at the line of scrimmage. And a host of nights they did him after that. Yes, indeed. See the big double nickel coming up off the bottom there as well. Will Derrick. So no gain on the play. Brings up a second and ten for the Knights. It'll be interesting to see our halftime stats here from Rob Howe because, uh, boy, they've run the ball a lot more than they've thrown the ball They here. surely have. Split backs here on second and ten. Two wide outs to the left side. Here's a snap. Give to the first man. New quarterback keeper around the edge. Gets to the 42 before he's wrangled down by Burkmeyer. Burkmeyer there. Johnny Sewell putting some pressure, absorbing the blocker to free up Burkmeyer to make the stick. But a nice little gain there for the quarterback. Yeah, we'll call that a gain of seven. And that will bring up a third and three now. Ball north of the 40, out to the 42-yard line. You could see, though, he's faster than the field would allow him to be on that run. Right. So they swap the uh, 
the formation here, two wideouts to the right side. Still split backs, pressure coming through the middle. Again, read option, give to the first man through. That was a mistake. He runs right into the breadbasket of Will Derrick. Big double nickel, number 55, defensive tackle for the Knights. Came off his block and made a big stick. No gain, no room to run, and he swallowed him up. You know, interestingly enough, it kind of, you know, lends itself to the strength of Will Derrick as well as the running back was running nice and low, good form. Yes. And he just stopped. Yeah, he I did. Mean, he yeah, didn't yeah. push Derrick back at all. No, he hit a wall. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, that's going to bring up a fourth and four for East Side. So a loss of one on the play back to the 41-yard line. Three minutes to go. Uh, yeah. And a long play call here. I'm not sure this is going to be the pooch punt. As they, a matter of uh, fact, they're going to talk about it. Yep. So a timeout on the field called by East Side. They had to call that timeout as the play clock was expiring. So we're going to step out for a little 30-second break as well. Stick around, football fans. This is IHSAA football playoff action right here on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Looking for a way to naturally aid in soothing aches, pains, and sore muscles and reduce inflammation from the skin? Want a relief in minutes? Try Alleviate. Contact Hillary Didier for details. You can find her at didier.hillary at gmail.com or call her at 260-312-1599. Keep your skills on point and take advantage of the Always 100 basketball camps. The Holiday Hoops... With Mike Geely, I'm Sean McBride here broadcasting live from Eastside High School in Butler, Indiana, where the Bishop Lures Knights are on top of the Blazers 3-0 with 3.18 to go here in the first half. Blazers facing a fourth and four from their own 41-yard line. Their quarterback slash punter, Laban Davis, is back in punt formation. The Knights took their punt return team out and put their starting D back in. Here's a snap. It's a low snap. He has to go back and get it. He does get the kick away. Takes a hop at the 30. Trickles down inside the 25. It would be touched up near the 23-yard line. So an effective punt that time for the East Side Blazers. And the offense will come back out onto the field for Bishop Lewis. We are just talking during the break that uh, both of these offenses so far, Mike, they are really struggling, and the numbers are showing it. Yeah, they yeah. certainly are. Uh, uh, Rob mentioned that on that last run by their quarterback, they doubled their uh, offensive yardage in the rushing game, and yeah. uh, and you're definitely seeing it with them trying to establish footing underneath them, and they're trying to adjust to it, but it certainly is neutralizing the speed on both sides of the field. Knights will be looking at a first and 10 from their own 23-yard line as they break huddle. Going to be a trips package to the right, uh, left side excuse me, with a single setback. Cam Hedgecock alone here on the right side. Carson Clark, here's a snap. Blitz comes. He's got pressure. Has to dump it. Oh, he's got an outlet pass. It's caught and gets out to the 25-yard line. Ball is out. He's down. He he's said down. he was down. So Ramon Anderson makes a sneaky little catch and makes a little turn and gets uh, some positive yards. Knights were trying to set up a screen to the left side of the field there. They had two guys downfield, which were establishing really nice blocks. They just couldn't get the guy on the corner blocked, and he made a nice play to bring down Ramon and hold him to no gain. <coughs> well, he falls forward for a couple oh, there. Yeah, true. So, yeah, yeah, but what it could have been <laughs> exactly. and what it was, yeah. two different things, yeah. yeah. So second and eight now for the Knights. Ball from their own 25-yard line. Again, trips to the left side. Here's a snap. Give to Braden Coward around the edge. He's got some blockers. He's got the first down. Mows down a blocker, a tackler near the 36-yard line. Excellent job. You know, he ran straight ahead, and he just kept his feet under him, and uh, the Knights did a nice job with a couple of nice blocks downfield just locking onto their man. So they were actually going to place him at the 37-yard line and a new set of downs for the Bishop Lewis Knights. Knights in a hurry-up offense here. No huddle. From the shotgun. Here's a snap on first down. He looks to throw. Checks off. Looks. Going deep. He's got Berkmeyer out there. It's alone and caught. Near the 35. The 30. Stiff arm. Down to the 20. Dragging a tackler with him. Finally, they bring him down near the 15-yard line. Excellent job there by Berkmeyer. First to rein the ball in. He had a beautiful throw, too, by the quarterback, Carson. And he got the ball. And when he did, the, you know, the defensive back, I think, was more worried about falling down than anything else. And so the Berkmeyer got a stiff arm on him and got himself an extra 5 or 10 yards on that. So they place the ball at the 16-yard line. So they are back inside the red zone. 
to see if we can get some yardage on that throw uh, because that was a huge one for the Bishop Lewis Knights. Here's a snap on first down. Give to Coward through the middle. Dances out of one tackle. Gets inside the 15 to um, uh, just a gain of one that time down to the 15-yard line. Nice pressure there by number 22, the linebacker, Trayvon McKinley. Uh, broke that play up before it could even get started. So good job by the Blazers to respond there on first down. Yeah, that previous play was a 47-yard connection that time between Clark and Berkmeyer. Biggest play of the night so far. Here's a hard count. Does not, well, it pulled him off, but he was able to get back again on sides. Here's a snap. Again, Coward on the draw through the middle left side. Getting a push behind him. And a big scrum out there on the left side. And now a timeout on the field. Well, the home faithful on that one were not happy. Again, a little bit of a head bob there by our quarterback, but no call. And uh, not much of a gain, though, there for the Knights. Got a timeout on the field called by the Bishop Lures Knights with 102 remaining here in the first half. We'll go down to the sidelines and check in with Corey Kitchen. Yeah, guys, in my walk by the uh, Lures sideline, I'm hearing the coaching staff discussing just how the Eastside Blazers are stacking the box and they're going to get the ball out of the box and out to their playmakers a little bit more often uh, as from a strategy standpoint here. If not before the half, I would look for a big dose of that in the second half. Well, and interestingly enough, maybe, Corey, they can map the field and find out where there's some grass left instead of some mud. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think that's got to be a field position yeah. decision. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. and as you mentioned, uh, right now where they're at currently – down here on what I would consider the south end of the field, almost in inside the 10, uh, is probably some of the best grass on the field. Definitely yeah. to the left side of the field, towards the home side, towards our press box side. Uh, it looks rough. Yes, yeah, yeah. it is. But mm -hmm. where the ball is placed over yeah. more yeah. towards the lures uh, sideline, so uh, hash. So I think, uh, you know, if you're going to run the football, this is probably the place to do it right here. Is the go. wind a factor tonight? It really isn't much of a factor. I think 5 to 10 at the max, so... Uh, not much of an issue. Okay. All right. Timeout is over, and the Knights are now facing a third and seven from the 13-yard line of east side. From the shotgun, Carson Clark with a single setback in Coward. Twins right, twins left. Here's a snap. He looks to throw. Looking left, looking right. Firing into the end zone. Got a man wide open. Oh. Off the fingertips of Cam Hedgecock. Nice double move by the Knights. Uh, Hedgecock ran a fake post and then switched to the corner route. Found himself wide open. Unfortunately, I think Carson threw it before he was out of his break and just out threw him a little bit yeah, there. Just off the fingertips. That was a huge missed opportunity, but that brings up a fourth and seven now. And the Knights, again, bring on... Um, Carter Drake. Carter Drake. See if he can chip the, this one in from the 30-yard line. Well, ball's at the 20, so it'll be a 30-yard attempt. Kick is up, away, a little low, but it looks good from here, and it, it is. is. All right. 6-0 to zero is your score now with 52.8 seconds remaining in the first half. The Bishop Lewis Knights are on top of the east side Blazers. We're back in 30 seconds. Stick around, folks. This is Playoff Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Keep your skills on point and take advantage of the deal, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Bishop Lewis Knights over the Eastside Blazers, 6-0, to zero, getting ready to wind down the first half of play. 52 seconds remaining. Carter Drake, 2 for 3 on the night, accounting for all of those six points. Huge okay. kickoff here for the night, Sean. Do yeah. not want to give up the big play before half. And let's see what Drake does here from the 40. Gets the kick, end over end kick, trailing to the far side, taking it about the 17-yard line, 25, through a big scrum, past the 30, and not much more there. Little extracurriculars going on there, no flag yet, and it doesn't look like there's going I to be I think it was a little either. mutual. I, uh, yeah. Our sidelines might have had a better view of it than we did from up here, but I think it was a mutual rollout after the play there. But uh, nice job by the Knights, kicking to the short side. 
and uh, getting downfield, staying in their lanes, and gave up a few yards on a return, but uh, the Blazers have a long way to go in 46 seconds. That they do. The ball is now resting at the 32-yard line of the Blazers. They've had uh, 15 plays and 16 yards, so we'll see what they do through the air here with 46 to go. And will they do anything is, is the question, or keep it safe. For that, uh, man in motion now coming to the left side, resetting on this end. Here's a snap. And they're going to go student body left, trying to find that edge, getting a few blocks out there, and he's going to get north of the 35 out to the 36. Corey did point out they did defer at the start of the game, so the Blazers are going to get the ball here coming out of half. So uh, the conservative approach might be uh, be happy with a six to, being down only 6 to nothing, right. I guess, Sean. Yeah, could very well be. That's Dax Holman on the carry that time. And uh, they are going to huddle up, and they come out with about 17 seconds remaining in the first half. And it looks like they're going to get one more playoff here on second and six. Here's a snap. Give to the first man through. Hit at the line, falling forward. And that is number 26. That is Farnsworth on the carry, and that's going to do it for the first half of uh, action, ladies and gentlemen. So we go into the locker room. Your score, 6-0, to zero, the Bishop Lures Knights on top of the Eastside Blazers here in Butler. So a lot to talk about here coming up in our Shawnee Construction Halftime Show. We're going to step out for a one-minute break and get ready for that. So stick around, folks. It's a cold night here in Butler. We're so very glad you're with us. We're back in 60 seconds. <clears throat> this is High School Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. Developing athletes to be foundationally strong. Healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any... We are back here, ladies and gentlemen, from Butler, Indiana, on the beautiful campus of Eastside High School, where the Bishop Lures Knights are on top of the Eastside Blazers, 6-0 to zero at the halftime break. And this is our halftime show, brought to you by Shawnee Construction and Engineering, a full-service construction firm that meets and exceeds expectations with a 94% repeat and referral business. When we say partnering for a lifetime, we mean it. That's Shawnee Construction and Engineering, our halftime sponsor. Right now, we're going to send it down to the field so we can do our VIP halftime interview. Nick Gray, take it away. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome down to the field. It's a little sloppy down here, but we're about ready to clean it up. We've got a couple of great guests with us this evening, a uh, couple of graduates of Bishop Lewis High School, Paul Gerardo and Chris Charay. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much, Nick. Yeah, glad to have you here. Um, not only were you probably instrumental in, uh, in being a great night, you know, back in the day, 1980, um, but also both of you very engaged and involved with our local community through your efforts over at St. Henry's Parish. So, Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field, dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors
give your home the curb appeal it deserves and trust Kurt's Meal to power wash your home. Additional services include concrete sealing, deck and fence cleaning, driveway replacement, and stamped concrete. Just head on over to KurtzMeo.com, request your virtual quote, and use the code Summit City for 15% off all power washing services today. That's KurtzMeo.com, supporting the youth of Fort Wayne. Looking for a way to naturally aid in soothing aches, pains, and sore muscles and reduce inflammation from the skin? Want a relief in minutes? Try Alleviate. Contact Hillary Didier for details. You can find her at didier.hillary at gmail.com or call her at 260-312-1599. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Parkview Ortho Express, located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, gives you access to quick care and orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Parkview Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. Developing athletes to be foundationally strong. Healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any age, any skill level. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. Thank you for supporting Summit City Sports. For the last several years, we've provided the Fort Wayne community and beyond with coverage of a variety of sports, thanks to our title sponsorship from Parkview Sports Medicine. Since we began in 2015, our annual budget has covered the cost of videographers and commentators to over 300 plus games each year. New equipment and maintenance of that equipment, along with increased broadcast rights fees from the IHSAA. This season, we're reaching out to friends, families, and local businesses for additional sponsorships and donations. You can help us grow and get coverage to your favorite team or sport. A Summit City Sports sponsorship or donation will help make that happen. We have the goal of bringing fans live stream games of every SAC game we cover. With the additional funds, we'd invest in mobile internet devices, allowing us to bring our supporters every SAC conference football, and boys and girls basketball games live, as well as more coverage for sports like cross country, tennis, golf, swimming, wrestling, track and field, baseball, and softball. For more information on sponsorships or how to donate, visit summitcitysports.com. And Landingham has two uh, receptions for 33 yards. 
uh, Jamie Johnson, two receptions for 22, and Burkmeyer, which is the really long 47-yard uh, catch down the field. So they're really making some uh, headway there. Uh, we've seen the consequences of the tough field uh, turf. We've seen one blocked punt, and of course the thing that has uh, been a real difference maker as far as stalling out those Lures drives is uh, Lures has five penalties for 50 yards as opposed to Eastside's one for five. Yeah, absolutely. Great insight there too, Rob. Thanks very much for that. So, uh, Mike Geely, when we talk about the first half of action, what uh, beyond field conditions, I think we can talk about it in general terms, it, it's terrible for both squads, it you really, know, obviously. Yeah, it really know. is. Um, and we've seen that affect not only the run game and the ability to play, but more specifically also the passing game as well. These quarterbacks, uh, they just cannot set up correctly to make those throws. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's kind of disappointing because you're not getting to see the kids at their best, unfortunately. But if I'm Coach Lindsay in the locker room right now, uh, in the Knights locker room right now, I'm saying, hey, we need to continue to shut down their run game. As Rob went over in the numbers, they did a great job of that in the first half. But don't allow yourself to go to sleep on defense. You know, the second half last week, uh, uh, the Blazers went to the air and they went deep, and they have the ability to do that. Their quarterback's got an arm. He's got a good coach in the offseason. But, uh, um, you know, they need to find um, – the, 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 on the offensive side of the ball, the Knights need to find some pride when they get inside the red zone. Um, they, they had that side of the field almost the entire half, and they came away with two field goals. And they got to start getting six points instead of three points. And, you know, they're going to continue to do what Corey pointed out in the second half, and that is, you know, we're going to try to, the Knights are going to try to get the ball to their weapons. And that's with quick, high percentage passes, uh, use the passing game to set back up the running game and, and work the clock in the second half. Corey Kitchen, let's uh, let's take it down to you on the sidelines down there. What's your uh, take on the first half so far and, and what Mike has said and uh, and get your thoughts, what you're seeing down there, uh, down on this muddy track? Well, I, a lot of... A lot of credit goes to the speed that Bishop Lures has on defense. I've been really impressed with their ability to swarm to the football and shut down that east side running game. I think as much uh, you know as they have great defensive linemen, I just think the speed of the linebackers and the and the safeties in getting to the football has been really impressive and has led really to that. 15 or 16 yards total offense that the Blazers have come up with so far. Yeah, and Corey, you know, just uh, I'm going to keep it here with you as well. We talked about on the, on the trip up here where we were concerned for the Knights and their ability to get to the edge on defense and really shut that down because that plays into that whole triple option scheme of getting to that edge quickly with some lead blockers. And so, again, to your point, I think that's exactly right. They've been able to do that, especially when the quarterback gets a seven-yard gain and that doubles their production. Yeah, absolutely right. And, and I think the, the field condition have really negated Eastside's ability to, to run that football. And I know the field conditions are the same for both teams, but I think the, the, the benefit to Lures is they have weapons on the outside, I think a little more so than the Blazers do, and, and have if they, you know, if they have the ability to get the ball out to those weapons in space, uh, in some turf, in some grass areas of the field that aren't quite as chewed up. Corey, Corey, if you're Coach Mason in that locker room right now, I mean, obviously you're probably telling your defense, hey, you know, Ben, don't break. You know, we came up big in the red zone. You know, what's his message to the offense? Well, I, you know, for the first thing you'd sell right now is you're getting the football to start the second half, and you're down less than a score, so to speak, uh, you know, as it relates to the scoreboard. So you're in really good position here if you can do something offensively. Now, you know, I, I think that they've got to do something as well, just just as the, the Knights have done such a nice job of, but Eastside's got to start putting the ball in the air and getting it on the perimeter. I like the, I like the screen idea, uh, but again, the Knights have been so quick to the football, they've done a good job in negating that as well. But I, I just think they've got to find a way to get the ball out of the box uh, whether that's downfield, whether that's screens on the edge, running back screens, what have you. Uh, but there just isn't a whole lot of real estate in the middle for either team. And, and Corey, you've been a quarterback's coach for both of these kids uh, from both squads. Uh, do you have grades for them yet here in the first half? You know, I think Carson has done a great job of, uh, of getting the ball to his guys in space. He's missed a couple of throws, absolutely. Uh, but he's done a good job of taking what the defense is get, giving him. I would uh, I would like to see from a play calling standpoint if I were the Knights, and I'm sure they'll probably attack this way in the second half. But I think they've got to go a little bit more to their single receiver side. Yeah. One on one matchups, they should be able to win those all night long. 
with with Laban Davis, he hasn't, other than running the football a couple of times, he hasn't been allowed to do a whole lot. I mean, we mentioned, I think, that three three pass attempts maybe. Uh, you know, that that's not a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of work there in the passing game, and I would expect that to increase here in the second half if they want any chance of, of trying to win this football and they, game. And they've got to find a way to give him some time. When he was dropping yeah. back, he's having to move out of the pocket, and uh, and so you know they've got to find a way to give him an opportunity to see downfield. No, you're ex- absolutely right. And I think I think Berkmeyer has been the key in the middle. I mean, he is just he is nasty at middle linebacker for, for the Knights and uh, has been putting constant pressure uh, both in the run game and the and uh, the pass rush, and uh, and he's he's a handful. Indeed, he is. Uh, Mike, what else do we have? Well, we got some big news here. Well, let's. Uh, right, we'll, we'll okay, that yeah, yeah, the, the only thing I was yeah. going to say is 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 you're exactly right, Corey and and uh, Berkmeyer. If you saw him in street clothes, you know you, you'd be amazed. Be, the, that kid is all heart and desire, and he is strong, and he is fast, and he is disruptive in the middle. Yes. And the Knights are using him in a lot of different ways. So that will be a key for them to try to neutralize him, so that they can get that ball moving. And they got to move the sticks. They had a couple of nice runs, um, but yeah, uh, Eastside definitely has to get a series of first. Down together and get some confidence with the ball. Yeah, they surely do. All right, folks, well, this is our halftime presentation. We need to step out for a little one-minute break. When we come back, we'll have scores and updates from around the area and get ready for the third quarter. Six to zero is your halftime score. The Bishop Lewis Knights on top of the East Side Blazers coming to you live from Butler, Indiana. So stick around, folks. We're back in 60 seconds. This is High School Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. I was once a South Side kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. Developing athletes to be foundationally strong. Healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any Welcome back to Butler, Indiana, ladies and gentlemen, on the beautiful campus of Eastside High School, where the Bishop Lures Knights are leading the Blazers 6-0 to here at halftime. Right now, we're going to send them down to the sidelines with some updates from around the area with Nick Gray. Well, welcome back to the sidelines, everybody. We just got an uh, interesting update. I get, got, all got us kind of excited. Carroll is now beating Snyder 28-10. to So uh, that's, that's very interesting. We'll keep an eye on that game because it could get... Uh, We'll see what happens. Anyhow, Northrop's beating Goshen 10-0, and uh, that score is important because the winner of that game will play the winner of Bishop Dwanger Northside. Right now, uh, Dwanger's given Northside a game, but Dwanger's leading 21-14. to um, Cal, East Noble, East Noble's winning that one 35-0. Northwood's beating Leo 6-0. Um, interesting game. Another one would be uh, Concordia. At Norwell or Norwell at Concordia right now. Concordia is winning that 14 to seven. Another one we're keeping an eye on is the Prairie Heights over at Fairfield, and Fairfield's winning that hands down 28 to zero. So the winner of that game will play the winner of this game here, guys. All right, Nick Gray, thanks very much for that uh, update. We'll check in with Nick a little later on in the contest as well, maybe a couple times. But uh, again, right now, updating your halftime score here in Butler, Indiana, it is six to zero. The Bishop Lures Knights on top. And again, folks, remember, next week, if in fact it proves, it looks like we will be with the Bishop Winger Saints if they uh, prevail over the Northside Legends. And uh, they will be more than likely, according to the score, taking on the Northrop Bruins at Shields Field on the campus of Bishop Winger High School. So we'll be live there at 6.50 p.m. for a sectional championship matchup between the Northrop Bruins and the Bishop Winger Saints. Again, if the, if the scores hold, so we'll... Keep an eye on both of those contests throughout the night here. Uh, but so far, the Bishop Bluers Knights are on top of East Side 6-0. to Now, uh, Mike, again, they uh, just reset. Uh, both teams are back out on the field, stretching, getting ready for the third quarter of action here. East Side gets the ball. 
And again, when we talked about this previously against Woodland, a completely, well, maybe not completely, but certainly a different look to start the second half. And you're anticipating them probably trying to do the same here against the uh, the Knights. Yeah, I think they're going to take a, take a look at what did and didn't work in the first half and look for them maybe to try to feel like they've set the Knights up here a little bit, lull them to sleep, get the Knights concentrating on their running game between the tackles, and look for them to maybe open it up over the top here and then uh, trust that arm of that young quarterback and uh, see if they can get a big play to break this thing uh, wide open for them. And they're only one score away from being in the lead. So they're in this game, and Coach Mason, I'm sure, has emphasized that at halftime. You betcha. Now, from a defensive perspective with the uh, with the Bishop Lures Knights, knowing that and looking at that film and studying it quite closely, do you see them bringing in a nickel package or, uh, you know, an extra DB or anything like that to start the third quarter? I would hope that they're going to, as a minimum, Coach Causey is going to remind those outside uh, cornerbacks and their safeties that they got it. They got to stay with the pass, protection first, the run second. And they got to emphasize up front, guys, we can take them out of that game, out of the running game and out of the passing game with pressure up the middle. Mm -hmm. So look for them to continue to blitz Berkmeyer from all different angles and look for those three guys up front on the D-line to try to put pressure on that quarterback so he's not comfortable in the pocket under a minute to go here in the halftime show so uh, that's going to wrap things up for there as both teams now getting back to the sidelines and preparing to uh, to kick off are the bishop lures knights here in under a minute to go and again east side will be getting the uh getting the ball to start the third quarter of action and mike we talk about it all the time but but it can't be talked about enough the opening drive in the third quarter is just a clarion call on how we are going to do things here to uh, to go for that victory for both of these squads. It sure is. It's important for the Knights to get a good kickoff, to get good coverage, to keep the, the Blazers held into their own end. And that first drive sets the tone for the rest of the half. And, uh, and, and it's important for both sides of the ball, and they'll be interested to see how it unfolds. And again, the Bishop Lures Knights on special teams doing a fine job tonight, really um, on all aspects. And again, uh, what cannot be overlooked is the battle of field position. Uh, the Knights have clearly won this time and time again. Unfortunately, they just haven't found really any pay dirt other than two Carter Drake field goals. That's right, and they're going to look to make a difference with that here in the second half when they get an opportunity to get the ball in their hands, and I'm sure that was an emphasis to punch it in the end zone. All right, so Breedemeyer is back along with Gegner for the um, – um, no, check that Miller, uh, the standout wide receiver. Really haven't talked about Miller at all tonight here for Eastside. Those two guys are back deep for the uh, Blazers. And Carter Drake prepares to kick this one away from his 40-yard line, kicking left to right on your radio dial. Ball is in the air. little short kick this time, taken near the 18-yard line. Trying to find some room, gets stuck near the 30 and dropped immediately. And that is where Eastside will take over. Nice play there by the freshman Quentin Roach uh, 5'9", 154 and he met the return man with uh, senior Krieger and the two of them collided together to make that stick ball resting right at the 30 yard line and that is where Laban Davis and company will come out on offense again east side wearing the uh, green and gray tonight for the Blazers again two sophomore quarterbacks field marshalling for the squads tonight under center this time, give to the tailback, student body to the left side, good backside pursuit that time by the Bishop Lures Knights. Falling forward for a gain of two, maybe three, is the running back number 24, Matt Firestein. So tight formation there. They went with a three-back offense, a little throwback to the veer, uh, wishbone maybe even a little bit of a look there with the tight end. Uh, nobody out wide, so d certainly didn't come out spreading it out to throw up top. But, yeah. Uh, Packing it in and going to do a little smash mouth here. Yeah, a little quarterback under center action now. Again, three men in the backfield behind him. And again, it's going to be a quick give through the middle. First man through. Not much there. Maybe forward progress out to the 35. And that's going to bring up a third and five situation. So, got the dive back that you need to worry about. And then you got the quarterback pulling out with the option to hand off or pitch. The triple option. Uh, Shown that. Now here, two plays in a row. We'll see what they do here on third down. And insider information that, uh, you know, that pitch never really is there for east side. The quarterback typically decides to be the uh, the runner that time, and he does have a lot of yards that time. Now, different formation, two wideouts to the right side, split backs. Tight end goes to the right side. Now we've got, we got uh, a motion on the left tackle. <laughs> whistle stop. 
the tackle and the tight end tried to go in motion at the same time, and unfortunately you can't do that. Can't so do that. I'm assuming that's what it is, but they're taking a long time to talk about it, so maybe it's something they're going to wave it off. They're waving the flag off. Hmm. So Eastside maybe have dodged a bullet that time. They had third and five. We're possibly looking at a third and ten. Maybe the argument was that the tackle wasn't set yet, so he was just in his motion of getting into preset, but uh, uh -huh. My stats guy disagrees with that and feels there should have been a flag. So I've seen that look before. I don't know if they saw anything different down on the field, but that's uh -huh. the way it looked up here. Wind the clock and let's do this again. Third and five now for east side. Same formation, two wideouts to the right side. Tight end winding up on the left side with split backs. Now tight end offset going to the right side. Man in motion now to the right side. Here's a snap. He looks to throw, looks to throw, has to tuck it. He's got pressure. Rolling out, firing over the flats. He's got his man, and it is caught near the 43-yard line. Well, there's that pressure that the Knights need to keep on him, but he was able to escape it, rolled to his right, and got the ball out quickly into a diving receiver who made the catch just enough to move the sticks for a first down. Yeah, that is a didn't, uh, Dylan Breedemeyer, number one, on the catch that time for east side, and that is a first down for east side. Will Derrick just a step away there from blowing that play up. Thinking if that's that might, that's our second first down on the night for east side. Tight formation now. Three men in the backfield. Get to the third man through. Good blocking up front. He's got a big scrum pushing forward. Getting close to the midfield stripe. The Blazers coming out with some confidence and starting to get some momentum here with this drive here at yeah. the start of the second half. Corey Kitchen, what do you have for us? Clearly the halftime adjustment for Todd Mason and the Blazers is to go power eye. They've gone under center uh, the last uh, to start this drive and, and now the last play or two. Uh, they must think they've got an advantage in running the football or they've just decided this is the way to go in this mud. Six-yard gain that time. Again, power formation this time. And this time it's going to be held up, pushing sidewards, and finally dropped. Forward progress, probably going to be north of the 50 into Bishop Lewis territory, near the 49-yard line. That's going to bring up a third and short, third and about two coming up for the Blazers. So the Knights' response to that is to stay with their base D, but they're packing everybody inside the box, 11-on-11 11, 11 11 here, football, and it's, a, it's scrum offense. All right, so east side now facing a third and short situation. They do place the ball at the 49-yard line of Bishop Lures. Come up to the line with about 10 seconds to go on the play clock. Under center. Here's a snap. Give to the third man through. Trying to find his way. He won't find much. Gets hit in the backfield and dropped. That's going to be a tackle for loss of one back near the 50-yard line. It's going to bring up a big fourth down decision for east side here. Fourth and about five, maybe uh, four, maybe three. three. Three, yeah. All right. They do place the ball right at the 50. Fourth and three coming up. Personnel changes on the way for east side. And again, their uh, quarterback, Laven Davis, does do the punting. And he will be back in that extended shotgun formation with a single setback up in front as a protector. So it looks like the punt is on. Snap, and the kick is away. Ramon Anderson back. Anderson will have a return from the 15-yard line, looking for some room. Gets a block, gets some more north and south, past the 30, out to the 35, finally dragged down by about four green helmets near the 37. So the Bishop Lures defense holds after signs of life are shown by east side on offense. And the Bishop Lures offense will take over first and 10 from their own 37-yard line. Excellent job by Ramon Anderson there, keeping his feet underneath him. Tough going there, tough sledding, as they like to say, uh, with the slippery field conditions. Got a couple of nice blocks by the up back and uh, was able to make a nice return there for the Knights. Carson Clark and company back out on offense for the Bishop Lures Knights. First and 10 from their own 37-yard line. Going to have an offset eye here. Single coverage on the, far, on the close side, on the right side, is Cam Hedgecock. Now they come up in press coverage. Here's a snap. Give to the tailback. That's Coward looking for room through the middle. Does have a little bit of room as he gets out to the 40-yard line. Call that a gain of three. That's going to bring up a second and seven. Little tray left there for the Knights. Pulled their right guard, right tackle. Got a couple of nice blocks at the point of attack. Able to get a little bit of a gain. No huddle offense now by the Knights. They'll come right back up to the line. Wide out left and right. J. McJohnson alone on the far side. Single coverage over on that side. Single setback. 
Here's a snap. No, split backs. Excuse me. Coward. Left side. Finds a seam. Gets to the first down before he's taken down. And that will be enough for a Knights first down. Past the 45, out to about the 47. Nice job by the Knights' big uglies up front. It was Workman and Johnson on their side of the field. Held help from Boudet and Rakanis and Suloff. And, uh, you know, the Knights did a nice job. Just a little outside zone run there. Everybody blocking man gap side and climbing to the second level. First and 10 for the Knights at the 48-yard line. Split backs in the backfield. Clark checking the sidelines, waiting for that snap now on first and ten. Here's a snap. Play action. Throwing out to the flats. It is thrown. And was he there too soon? No, he was trying to get Jay McJohnson. Boy, that was close, Sean. Yeah. I tell you what, I think uh, the, and it was right there on the lure sideline, and I know the coaching staff was reaching for a flag. They just didn't have one in their pocket. They did not. Uh, so, And yeah. I want to give some love there to Justin Baum, our right guard. He's in there, and uh, I, I said Rectanus, but I meant to say Baum. All right, so the incomplete pass brings up a second and ten now. As the pass to Jay McJohnson was incomplete. Split backs. From the shotgun. Here's a snap. Again, give to the tailback. Around the right side this time. Trying the counter. Not much there for Coward as he falls forward to the 50. Good All job right. by the Blazers there. Uh, multiple guys uh, penetrating, breaking up the the, uh, the lane for him. And, and he didn't have a lot of room to make any cuts. Yeah, gain of two that time. Brings up a third and eight. So it looks like a passing situation coming up for Carson Clark. Knights in the no huddle. No huddle offense. Split backs now. From the shotgun. Blitz shown. Fake to uh, Braden Coward. Pass over the middle. Up and nearly caught, but no. Thrown a little bit behind and incomplete as uh, Clark was taken out. Had some big pressure right up the middle and an incomplete pass. It looked like the Knights were setting up for a screen pass there, but the pass actually went downfield and unfortunately Hedgecock just couldn't get spun around enough to get more than just a fingertip on it. So Ben Jennings in to punt this one away as this drive stalls after a first down. He'll launch this from about the 39-yard line. One man back deep for east side. Good snap, steps into it from the 41, kick is away, good kick that time by Jennings, taken inside the 20, oh, oh, ball is loose, covered by east side, falling forward and it's going to be stopped at about the 24 yard line. Wow, so serendipity shining down on the Blazers as they were able to retain that fumble. Antoine Lake, the sophomore, with a big stick, popped the ball loose. Unfortunately, the Knights weren't there to get on it, and uh, enough Blazers in the territory to land on the ball. So they're going to keep the ball here with first and ten. So both defenses coming up big here to start the third quarter. Six to zero is your score. Six oh four remaining in the third quarter. And Eastside now with another chance, led by Laban Davis. Back in the power eye. Here is a snap. Fake at quarterback end around. They spread him out. Good, nice job by the uh, defense. That's Burkmeyer streaking in for a huge tackle. He must have those special cleats tonight because <laughs> this field condition is not slowing him down at all. He came yeah. like a white flash there, and uh, unfortunately, the quarterback was trying to make his cut, but Burkmeyer was there to make sure that that didn't happen. Maybe a gain of one that time out to the 25 yard line. Going to bring up second and nine. As the Blazers emerge from the huddle. Again, power eye this time. Quarterback under center. Here's a snap. Play action. He looks to throw. He's still got a bootlegging out. Firing. Thrown in. And it's Ramon picked off. Anderson with the big pick for the Knights. Beautiful. Great, great job by Ramon Anderson stepping. But really what made that happen was the pressure coming from the outside. Blitzing Johnny Sewell from the right defensive end. Outside linebacker position. He had the pressure on. Forced the quarterback to roll right. He unloaded it sooner than he wanted to. And Ramon Anderson was there to bring that one in. And it puts the Knights in great field position. So great pressure and great coverage. Gives the ball back to the Knights inside uh, east side territory at their 44-yard line. So, uh, again, we talk about Ramon Anderson doing a great job on both sides of the ball for the Knights. And, again, first and ten now for Carson Clark and company. C.J. Hale in the backfield. Here's a snap. Clark looks to throw on first down, firing left side. He's got a man open, and it is thrown and incomplete that time. Jamie Johnson, I believe, on the yes. 
Had a chance. The ball was there. Uh, hit him in the hands. Unfortunately, he was kind of falling down to his outside shoulder, and he just wasn't able to bring it in. Nice job of the Knights up front. Carson had plenty of time to look over the field on that one. So that burns it down. Second and ten now coming up. Two men in the backfield along with Clark. Wideouts left and right. Here's a snap. Again, that's C.J. Hale trying to make his way around the edge and blown up. He tried to bounce it outside. There was nothing there. Couldn't go north and south. Big swarming defense that time by the uh, Blazers. I want to go back to that previous play, Sean. You know, uh, Corey talked about it at halftime. That's that single coverage that they had on Jay McJohnson out there. And, and as Corey pointed out, that's something the Knights should look to exploit here in the second half. Uh, unfortunately, just couldn't pull it in. Yeah. No. Big tackle for loss there. Loss at three, so brings up third and 13. Now a different look for the Knights. Trips package to the right side, one wide left. As Clark finally gets the call, barks it to the offense. Three, two, one. Not going to be able to get the playoff, and it looks like Bishop Lewers is going to have to burn a timeout here on a critical third and 13. Again, they are in Blazer territory, so the next two downs, are going to be very critical for the uh, Bishop Lures Knights. Well, folks, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union is a strong supporter of Redeemer Radio in our Fort Wayne area Catholic schools. This makes a huge difference in our community. Notre Dame FCU would now like to challenge more people to do the same. Just call Tricia Benzing at 260-247-2361 to get more information on how you, too, can become a sponsor of high school sports or daily programming on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. I really like that alignment there. The Knights were in trips right, and they had Hedgecock and Jay McJohnson side by side, and the Blazers were in single coverage across the board on the trips, and then they had Scotty Van Landingham on the border side, short side of the field. He was in single coverage as well. Would have been yeah. nice to have been able to get that playoff. I think the Knights yeah. had something in the works. We'll see if the Blazers adjust if the Knights come back in their trips. And it looks like Berkmeyer will be out here as well on the trips package to the right side. All single coverage. Yep, and a single setback in the backfield along with Carson Clark. On third and 13. Here's a snap. Looking, looking. Has time. Firing left and thrown off target and incomplete that time. It was a sticks route around the uh, left side and just not able to make it happen. Yeah, Scotty Van Landingham had created separation. The defensive back was backpedaling. He was at the sticks. He had turned inside. Unfortunately, the ball went outside. Kind of makes you wonder if there wasn't a route or, or just different expectations there. But, uh, yeah. unfortunately, that ball do dove in a hurry. All right, so Ben Jennings on to punt on 4th and 13 as the Knights can't make uh, hay on a short field here. Here is a snap. It's a good one. Steps into it. Gets the kick away. And it is a great punt. Going to stop near the 8-yard line, maybe the 9, and that's a no return on the play for east side. I'm not sure why the Knights didn't let that bounce a few more times, yeah. but we'll take, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, And then the other thing I want to point out there, too, you know, for, if I'm east side, you know, that's two series in a row where they shut the Knights down. Yeah, precisely right. Yeah, let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Corey Kitchen. I agree with you, Mike, on the punt in particular. I mean, they had the ability to let that bounce, and it, it was heading towards inside the five, I think, but, uh, but the east side will start from the nine. All right, first and ten for east side as both teams really kind of trading short drives here. Here's a give this time through the middle, and he will get north of the ten out to about the 11-yard line, so not much there on the inside give. The big junior, Ben Richtan, has swallowed that one up, had help from uh, Burke Meyer and Will Derrick, so nice job by the Knights interior. So from the nine out to the 11, gain of two. Brings up a second and eight with 3.52 remaining here in the third quarter. Again, score 6-0. to zero. Bishop Lewers on top of east side off of a pair of Carter Drake field goals. Here's a snap. Again, to the third man through. Has a lead blocker stretching it out. He's got some room out to the 20 and hammered down near the 20-yard line is the running back for east side that is number 24 and that's matt firestein you know that's really a nice job by the blazers there to get to the edge and it was really a straight ahead run for him no cutting no nothing he had two lead blockers out in front of him uh both took their man and he was able to slice through and make a nice gain and it will be enough for a blazer first down just north of the uh, 20 out to the 21 yard line so a fresh set of downs for the men in green as they break huddle again with that power eye right formation 
We'll call it a wishbone. Three men in the backfield. Again, give to the first man through, trying the counter, and nothing is there as Rectennis wrapped him up and is dragging him backwards. And uh, forward progress back to the line of scrimmage. True to form in the first half. Nothing given up there in the inside, in between the tackles by the Knights. Look for the Blazers to try to continue to exploit things to the edge. Corey, what do you have for us? Well, I think Mike mentioned it. The, the Blazers have got to get off tackle. Uh, the Knights possess three defensive linemen, probably better than any D lineman these sides faced all season. So that if they don't get it outside of those guys, they've got no shot. Here they are on second and ten. Again, quarterback now rolling, looking to throw. Uh oh, battered away. Quarterback still has it. Hit the backfield and drop. That's a pass and reception, I believe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So crazy one that time. I didn't see who got pressure on the far side. Number ten. All right. Jennings. So Ben Jennings comes up with a huge bat. Now the quarterback got the ball again from the air, but then Jennings was there to wrap him up back at the 10-yard line. Nice job with the vertical leap to swat the ball back towards the quarterback, and he was able to make the reception and then was taken down. So that's going to bring up a third and 20 situation. Now they spread things out with the trips package to the left side. One wide right. Here's a snap. He looks to throw. Pressure comes. He has uh -oh. to roll out. Oh, he's hit. He is dropped back near the goal line. Wow. Great pressure through the middle. Excellent job there by the Knights. Big double nickel. Will Derrick was there, and uh, that was right into Corey's kitchen down there, uh, uh, right down where he's at the corner of the end zone. What did you see down there? <laughs> it was. It was a great job by Will Derrick. They just they brought the house, basically, uh, in, in that blitz and uh, forced Davis out of the pocket, but he just couldn't get the ball off. Yeah, so, again, they drop him at the one-yard line. And now Eastside is facing a fourth and 30 from their own one-yard line as Laban will have to punt this one from deep in his own end zone. Here's a snap. Gets uh -oh. a foot. Oh, it's tipped. It's tipped. And it is going to be hobbling down Get the field. Away, Knights. Takes a nice Eastside bounce, though, as it's going to roll out to about the 38-yard line. That's a coach's nightmare right there. You're either receiving the ball and running or get out of the way. Yeah. Bad things can happen when you stand around to watch the ball. Yeah. But uh, they really got a fortunate roll because the Knights got a hand on that, and he was able to get enough power into that kick and to get the bounce and the roll that he needed. Indeed. So they put the ball at the 38-yard line, and the Bishop Lures Knights off of an impressive defensive stand will take over on offense again with a short field here. So let's see if, in fact, they can put something together north and south defense has the momentum and the energy going let's see if that translates to the offense clark will be in the shotgun trips package to the right side one wide left working off the left hash mark here's a snap a little low he looks to throw looks to throw fires and it's picked uh -oh. off at the 35 he's got open field at the 40 the 50 the 45 he's got a team in front of him nobody can catch him he's off to the races at the 10 the five touchdown east side what a play there by the Blazers. The Knights trying to throw out into the flats, and he stepped in front of it, and he was off to the races, and he had five blockers in front of him, and nobody from the Knights was going to catch him or get to him, that's for sure. Number 16, Carson Evers, the linebacker, with a huge game-changing pick six for the East Side Blazers, and we are all knotted up at sixes with 43.3 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Wow. This the, is a huge PAT coming up for East Side. He's 37 of 38 on the year, so uh, he's been here before. The kicker, number four, Jaden Baker. But they're short a guy. They are the, short a guy racing back out onto the field. I'm sorry. Jaden is a she, Jaden Baker. Here's the snap, the hold, the kick. All three look good. No, it's wide left. It's oh, no. wide left. Baker misses the PAT, and we remain knotted up at six. We're going to step out for a 30-second break and check our breath. It is sixes here with 43 seconds left here in the third quarter. Stick around, folks. This is Playoff Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. 
Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Keep your skills on point and take advantage of the Always 100 basketball camps. The Holiday Hoops Developmental Camp is for ages pre-K through 8th grade. You'll work on shooting, dribbling, passing, and defense December 24th through January the 2nd on Tuesday and the third quarter. We talked about it at halftime, and you know, they were one play away, one score away from making this a ball game, and their defense came through for them there. <laughs> so Michael Geiger will be on to kick this one away, and let's see what Eastside does here. As Hedgecock is back deep, along with, is that Jay McJohnson? Uh, I believe it is, yes. So Johnson and Hedgecock stand inside their own 20-yard line. As Geiger will be in to put his leg into it. It's a long driving kick over Hedgecock's head. He does pick it up near the four-yard line looking for some traction. And he is hit at the 10, driven back, and stopped. Ball comes out, but they waved it already dead. dead. All right, so again, the play is down. There was a uh, fight for the ball back in the end zone, and they're taking special teams off the field. Yep. They're going to say he was down. Let's see nice dodge they... a bullet on that one there because the ball did come flying out, but uh, yeah. apparently he was down. And I tell you what, uh, momentum here with the home crowd and that big interception has really turned the tide here, and Eastside is fired up. That they are. So the offense back out onto the field here for the Bishop Lures Knights. Sixes on the scoreboard with 34 seconds. Now we've got late flags coming out onto the field. Too many men. 12 on the field for the Knights. 12 men on the field for the Knights. And this will back them up. They weren't starting well to begin with from the original line of scrimmage. That's interesting with the head coach up top that Corey mentioned before. They get a lot of time to discuss that with the referees as to what they want to do. So, again, we've got three strikes talking about things. And he's just carrying the ball around with him. Yeah, he almost started going the wrong way. That's very, very strange. Well, folks, while we've got some room here, let's talk to you about Tim Didier Meats. They've been locally and family-owned for 37 years, and they've got a reputation for custom fresh meat orders and customer service. If you want that special cut of ground beef for your next gathering, call Tim Didier Meats. They can be reached at 482-8400 or find them on the web at timdidiermeats.com. Well, Eastside decides to take the penalty. And this is going to march uh, the ball back deeper into Bishop Lewer's territory. And it looks like they're going to have the ball at about the 13-yard line. 15-yard penalty on the Knights. Wow. Well, that brings up second and forever now for the Bishop Lewer's Knights. Coach Lindsay's asking for a conference on this one to find out exactly what just sure transpired should. there. Yeah. yeah, they marked yeah. it from the spot of the end of the run instead of from the spot of the infraction or from the original line of scrimmage, which is interesting. All right, so the ball remains there. It's going to bring up a second and 22 now for the Bishop Lures Knights, and they wind the clock. That was a huge penalty against the Knights. Carson Clark in the back with a single setback, looks to throw on second down, pumps, fires, got it deep, and it is, oh, in and out of the hands of a backpedaling receiver, and Jamie Johnson just can't come up with it. He couldn't, and there was a hand in the air from the safety, Lane Burns, number 15 for Eastside, and it was just enough to distract Jamie. And uh, couldn't pull it in, but nice throw by Carson. Gave him every opportunity to pull that one in. Well, a critical pass is dropped that time by Bishop Lures, and that brings up third and 22 now. Good moxie by the sophomore quarterback and confidence from his coaching staff, allowing him to air it back out. Sure. They need to get out past the 35 to the 37-yard line for a first down. Here's a snap. He looks to throw. Throwing, airing it out. He's got a man in the flats. It is caught. Won't be near enough for a first down, but a good reception that time. Christian Fly on the reception on the night sideline. Got back to the original line of scrimmage before the penalty, so it's going to bring up fourth, fourth and long, and, fourth unfortunately. Fourth and ten, it looks like, out to about the um, the 26-yard line. Well, another stalled d- drive this time by the Bishop Lures offense as the punt team comes on as Ben Jennings will get ready to launch this one. Could have been worse. Could be punting out <laughs> of the back of our end zone. Isn't that so, the truth? Yeah. yeah. Wow. 
Good snap this time right in Jennings' bread basket. Nice uh, spiraling kick taken and caught near the 32-yard line, trying to find some room, not finding much. He'll fall forward after tackling, uh, getting tackled by about four Knights near the 34-yard line. Excellent coverage down there by the Knights. Number 86, Braden McIntriff, a, uh, uh, a freshman, and uh, uh, the, the return man went backwards a couple yards. It gave up more yardage than he needed to, I think. But, uh, again, trying to find good footing has been an issue all night. Well, folks, Bishop Lewis High School is hosting an open house on Thursday, November 7th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Tours and information about financial aid and tuition will be open to the public. Come experience Lewis Spirit in a faith-filled environment on November 7th. First and 10 for east side. End around, left side. Caught in the backfield and dropped. Tremendous uh, edge protection that time. Looked by number four, Johnny Sewell. Ball scored it out there. Krieger jumped on it, but he was already down. Power eye formation. Gave the ball to the tailback, and the Knights were uh, swarming him as he tried to reach the original line of scrimmage. So a loss of one that time brings up second and 11. So they place the ball at the 33-yard line. They break huddle and come to the line. New formation now this time as they spread things out. Single setback, two wide outs to the right side with an H back, wide out left. Man in motion out to the right side as well. Here's a snap. He looks to throw, looks to throw, fires, tipped, and oh. incomplete. Nice job there by the Knights getting a hand in the air. I didn't see who it was. I'm guessing it was Rectanus, number 73. But uh, excellent job there by Dakota Suloff, the junior, uh, trying to make a break on the ball and just fell a yard short from picking that one. Well, the front three all night for Bishop Lewis, hats off. They've really done a fine job up front. Yeah, they're doing a great job of getting off their blocks and putting pressure both on the pass game and, and, and shutting down the run between the tackles. That stops the clock with 9.45 to go here in the contest. We're knotted up at 6. East side facing a third and 11 now from their own 34-yard line. Man in motion to the right side. Here's a snap. He's looking right. Receiver falls down. He's in trouble. Tries to get north and south. Breaks a tackle. Gets to the outside. Now gets to north and south room. Running out of bounds after a gain of two or three. Jay McJohnson with the uh, force out of bounds there. He ran a long way to get there uh, to gain those yards. But uh, good pressure by the Knights. And you're right, uh, Sean. He had his uh, running back in, in motion uh, open in the flats. But he fell down. And that caused him to make a new decision and try to run for it. So Davis had to scramble, and he gains about uh, four yards on the play, and that brings up a fourth and seven now for East Side. And it looks like this drive will stall as well as uh, Laban Davis goes back in that long shotgun to punt this one away. Kick is away and good. And it looks like it will take a bounce. No return that time for Bishop Lures. And it's going to casually drop at about the 32-yard line. Excellent job by East Side Special Teams, keeping the Knights' weapons from being able to get their return game going. And we've seen it all night long, whether it's with the extra bounce or the ball dying when it hits the ground. Well, and Mike, too, you think about in the first half, the battle of field position as Bishop Lures was getting the ball sometimes yes. in East Side territory yeah. to start these drives. And yeah. now they've got 15, 20, 30 yards more yeah. uh, in the second half. Yeah, ever since that interception, and Corey yeah. mentioned it off air, you know, it really flipped the field on the Knights. And since then, it's been... Uh, it's been uh, the Knights trying to dig their way out. Yeah. Well, let's see if, in fact, they can get a power run game going here or do something here on offense to break this 6-6 six -six tie. First and 10. Here's a snap. Low snap again. Quarterback decides to keep it, trying to find some room. Oh, again, a wildcat that time. I believe that's yes, Cam Hedgecock. Hedgecock. Yes, yeah. it was. So. Trying to find something, and he didn't find much. Unfortunately for the Knights, that all starts with the snap. You know, you got to have that snap where he's not looking for the ball and he's he's able to survey the defense, especially in the uh, in the Wildcat. That uh, Wildcat yeah. quarterback has that opportunity to read the defense and make a play, but he can't have his eyes on the ground looking no. for the ball. He had to go all the way down to the carpet to get that ball, and so not good there. As uh, again, no gain on the play brings up second and ten. Again, low snap and a Hedgecock trying to no, know that time. I believe that was. Uh, Ramon Anderson. That was Hedgecock. Oh, it was Hedgecock. Yeah, it was Hedgecock. Two, not 20. Okay. Inter interesting move here by the Knights, and I get what they're trying to do. The coaching staff is trying to create a little spark, a little energy, mix it up a little bit, get somebody else getting the ball off the snap, see if that gets a little energy going out of the line. But two plays in a row, nothing doing for the Knights. Berkmeyer checks in for the Knights. That was a tackle for loss of two, so that brings up third and 12 now for the Knights. They need to get out to the 43-yard line for a first down. 
They break huddle, at, and uh, Carson Clark is your quarterback now. Single setback, two wideouts to the left side. And a, now it's going to be a delayed game, I believe. As they were not able to get that snap off. And that is a delay of game. So a little change up there by the Knights getting out of that uh, uh, getting out of that formation and couldn't yep. get the playoff. Corey Kitchen, what do you have for us? Well, I hate to put that on the quarterback when he is uh, he's listening to his coaches on the sideline. The coaches were still calling the play in when the clock hit zero. Yeah, third and 17 now for the Bishop Lewis Knights as they continue to go backwards here on offense. Here's the snap. He looks to throw. Has time. Goes over the top. And looking for Burkmeyer. Jump ball. Pick off again. The uh, east side gets the ball after it is contested twice. And a huge interception that time. That was uh, number one, Dylan Breedemeyer, on the interception. I'm not sure Burkmeyer ever had a chance to catch that. He played more defense than he did offense. And yeah. what, what, what just happened there was probably about the equivalent of a punt. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. So, Eastside with another interception on the night. They had a 70-yard pick six. This time, this interception, no return afterwards. But Breedemeyer comes up with it, and now the Eastside offense back out on the field. 52 yards to go for a score. Here's the snap. Play action. He's got time going over the top. He's got a man wide open. It is caught in stride at the 10, the 5, touchdown. Corey Kitchen from the sidelines, what do you have? That's the same play that the Blazers used one week ago against Woodland uh, to get their offense rolling in uh, either, was either late first half or early in the second half. I believe sec early in the second half. The play action pass, they haven't gone play action all night long, and they finally did, and huge catch by Wade Miller. Uh, really, it almost got over his head, but made the fingertip catch that it was a beautiful catch by Miller that time the PAT is up and it is good so seven more points on the board for east side with 749 remaining the score now 13 to 6 east side over Bishop Lewers will step out for a 30 second break you're listening to high school football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM only automotive group is simple transparent reliable simple our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Keep your skills on point and take advantage of the always of Eastside High School, a 52-yard over-the-top score by Eastside, and now your score is 13-6 to Eastside over the Bishop Lures Knights here in the fourth quarter. We talked about it at the half. The Lures defense, do not get lulled to sleep. Keep your defensive backs alive and alert and awake. And Wade Miller found an extra gear, and he threw it up, and he ran underneath it. And what a great play by Eastside. And uh, the Knights saw it on film, uh, just couldn't defend it here in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Big momentum swing here for the Blazers. 7.49 to go in the contest, and Eastside has their first lead of the game. Here is their kick. Short kick, takes a hop, picked up by Bishop Lures near the 15-yard line, looking through the middle, has a seam, gets a block, spinning out. Jay McJohnson takes it out to the 31-yard line before he is tackled. So here come the Bishop Lures on offense. And so far, to be honest, Mike, and I know you'll agree with me, the offense in the second half has really done not much of anything. No, they really haven't. Yeah. They haven't been able to put anything together with the running game and the passing game as well. Uh, just not consistent enough to move the sticks. And you got to be patient here. There's still plenty of time, 7.42 to go. You don't need to get it all back in one play. I'm sure if you're the Knights, you, you want that to happen in one play, but right. be patient. Christian Fly, or check that, he checks out as, uh, as Carson Clark is your quarterback with a single setback. Two wideouts left and right. Here's the throw out to the sidelines. He's got his man. Jay McJohnson. And Johnson takes it out of bounds after it looks to be about a seven, maybe an eight-yard catch out near the 40-yard line. Big throw, big catch by Jay McJohnson there into double coverage, and he came down with the ball and uh, was ushered out of bounds. So big gain there, making it second and manageable. 
Call it an eight-yard gain out to the 40-yard line. Brings up second and two now. A little different look. Twins right, twins left. They don't huddle up, but they do take their time uh, calling this play. Johnson and Hedgecock on the near side of the field together. Working off that left, uh, right hash mark. Here's a snap. He throws back. Middle, Middle screen. screen. Hedgecock got it. And he's got blockers. He's got the first out of more. Into his east side territory. Still on his feet. Knocked out of bounds near the 44-yard line. Hedgecock came from the wide side of the field. And the Knights offensive line did a nice job uh, setting up their blocks, allowing the defensive line to penetrate, and then getting some nice blocks downfield for Hedgecock. Corey Kitchen, what do you have? Year in, year out, I can tell you as an opposing coach in the SAC, nobody screens you better <laughs> than the Bishop Lures Knights. They might be the best screen team in the state of Indiana. Indeed. All right, first and ten now in east side territory for the Knights. Trips package to the left side. One wide right with a big cushion too as well. Here's a snap. Give to Coward through the middle. Falling forward for a gain of one is Coward, number five. Takes it down to about the 43-yard line. Not a bad call by the Knights there. You're not going to, you know, you got to mix it up. you got to keep east side off balance. Uh, would like to see a little more yardage, a little more movement by the offensive line. Uh, we want, uh, we, if you're the offensive coordinator, you want to see a little more movement up front. They're going to stay in that trips package to the left side, one wide right, single setback. 6.20 to go here in the contest. Here's a snap. Screen. Right side. He's got his man. It is caught. Going north and south. Getting a few more yards down to the 40. Scotty Van Landingham on the reception. I think that's his third one of the night. So nice job bringing that one in and uh, getting some positive yards. Quick hitter is going to bring up a fourth and about six here for the Bishop Lures Knights. Ball resting at the 40. They need to get down to the 34 for a uh, first down. Under six minutes to go in the contest now. They stay in that trips package left. Berkmeyer in the slot. Here's a snap on third and six. Pressure, pressure coming. Backside pressure. He's dropped for a huge sack with a flag face mask near the 46-yard line. It's got to be a face mask and blow to the head is all I can figure. Because well, everything else looked clean. It did. And again, from the defender's perspective, you always want to go high and try and wrap him up to keep him from throwing. But this is going to be a face mask against the East Side Blazers. Wow. Would have brought up uh, very long for the Knights after that sack. But uh, they're going to be uh, very fortunate here on uh, the face mask call that's going to give them an automatic first down after the refs get done marking this one off. That was huge. Backside pressure by the Blazers. They brought it at the right time. He had no time. He started to see it, tried to scramble, but it was too late. And that is the personal foul variety. Oh, so it's not on my no, first no. down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow, that brings it. So oh, I'm sorry, I been. thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was too. Brings up a third and two here for the Bishop Lewers Knights as they move the ball out to the 36-yard line. Here's a snap on third and two. Give to Coward. No, quarterback tries to keep it, and oh. he goes down. Falling down and slipping is the quarterback, Carson Clark, and he is going to get to the... 38-yard line, and that's going to bring up a fourth and four now. Great call by the Knights, and I think it was there. You know, the Blazers were coming across the field. They might have had a shot of stopping him at, uh, at the first down marker, but he had a shot there if he wouldn't have lost his foot. Wow. All right, Knights, offense remains on fourth and four. Hard count. Doesn't draw him off. Checks to the sidelines. Two wideouts left. Two wideouts right. Here's a snap. He has to throw, looking to throw, firing, going deep, over the side, and out of bounds and incomplete. So the drive stalls, and they give the ball back to east side with 4.42 remaining in the contest. The Blazers up 13-6 over the Bishop Lures Knights. Just when you thought the Knights were putting something together, the drive stalls, and east side will take over on offense. That's a tough one, Sean. Fourth and four, and uh, the Knights are throwing the ball down the sideline 25 yards. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, and did some pretty decent coverage as well. So, unfortunately there, you really want to be in a spot to just get something high percentage and move the sticks. But uh, they went for the big strike, and it didn't happen. So, east side will take over. First and ten at their own 38-yard line. Laban Davis, the sophomore quarterback. Featuring a power eye right. Give to the third man through. Looking for some room through the middle. And nothing there as Rectanus wraps him up with a host of knights. 
So east side here is looking to keep that clock running. Yep. They're going to they're going to get up slow. Uh, they are going to uh, try to move the sticks on the ground. If I'm if I'm coaching east side right here, uh, I want the Knights getting the ball back with as little amount of time left as possible. Gain of one that time takes it out to the 39 yard line, facing a second and nine now. Or the men in green who break huddle and come to the line with 15 seconds remaining on the play clock. Again, that power eye right formation, quarterback under center. He's going to milk this down. Yep. Here's a snap. Give. No, quarterback bootlegs around the left side. Nobody is there. He's got Green Acres in front of him. Trying to make a cut. Does. Gets the first down and more in the Bishop Lures territory. Is the quarterback, Laban Davis. We'll go down to the sidelines and check in with Corey Kitchen. Got to tell you, a phenomenal play call right there on the bootleg. As an offensive coordinator, kind of made me drool a little bit. They, uh... And he's done a nice job as well milking that clock. He doesn't appear to play much like a sophomore. 19-yard gain that time by the sophomore quarterback. And a fresh set of downs coming up inside Bishop Lewer's territory. He also did a nice job of cutting back up inside on the field and not running towards the boundary or out of bounds. So it keeps that clock running. First and 10 here for Eastside. Give to the first man through. Not much there on the interior give. That was an important first down. Brings up a second and eight here with three minutes and 15 seconds. Still counting down. Ball resting at the 40-yard line. Again, Eastside taking their time, working off that left hash mark. They'll run this down with 21 seconds to go on the play clock. Probably down underneath five seconds before they snap it. Wade Miller checking in. Tight formation again. Three men in the backfield with the quarterback under center. Coach Lindsay at, might look to use a timeout after this play. Yeah, looking at second and eight. Giving to the third man through. Has some lead blockers. Getting out to the flats. Big push that time for mine. Launching that running back down to about the 32-yard line. It's going to depend on the spot here. It will, do, And it they will have down. another first down. Boy, the Knights had him stop, but there was a big push that came from the backside. An east side player actually launching the running back and the tackler forward to give them enough yardage for the first down. So an unfortunate extra gain after the hit was made for the Knights. First and 10 for east side from the 32-yard line. Oh, we got some movement, and that is going to move them back five yards. And And stop the clock. And stop the clock with 225 remaining. Again, east side 13, Bishop Lewer 6. And that will push him back to about the 37. Well, folks, Tri-State Storage Trailer Rental is a local company running full-size semi-trailers and ground-level containers for commercial storage solutions. Call Kevin Hauser at 844-293-5268. So the clock's running again. Just a little over two minutes left here. Big first down for the Blazers. First and 15 for the Blazers. Back at their own 30 at the Knights 37 yard line. Quarterback decides to keep it. Inside tackle run. He takes it back to the original line of scrimmage, and we do have a timeout on the field. Coach Lindsay now with the Knights is going to start using his timeouts to have some resemblance of time on the clock left if they can get him stopped here. Obviously, we're in four down territory. The Blazers are going to do everything they can to eat up the clock. And nice tackle there by Ben Jennings. Good time to check in down on the sidelines with Nick Gray with um, late scores, maybe even some final scores from around the SAC and Northeast Indiana. So let's try and do just that. Thank you for the long intro. I couldn't get my card open. <laughs> <laughs> True professional. Anyhow, uh, we do have a final. Uh, Fairfield did beat Perry Heights. So the winner of uh, this game will, will play Fairfield next week. Um, Bishop DeLanger is finally starting to get their uh, legs under them, and right now they're beating Northside 35-14. to 14. So I would say in the fourth quarter it has been All Saints on All Saints Day. I've been yep. waiting to say that all day, guys. Yeah, nice. Anyhow, uh, some shockers. Uh, well, not really, but uh, Homestead's losing to Noblesville 13-7. to 7. Mm-hmm. Carroll's still beating Snyder 28-17. to 17. Um Marion's beating New Haven 17 to 6. Concordia is uh, beating Norwell 14 to 7. So we'll send it back up to you guys. All right. Thanks very much, Nick Gray, for that update. Two scores tonight that are kind of surprising this one and the Snyder score. 
Here it is on second and ten for east side. They try a uh, end around to the right side. Not much there at all. Another timeout by the yeah. Knights. And another timeout by the Knights. We're going to go ahead and step out, take a break, 30 seconds, and we'll be back. This is High School Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Holy Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Keep your skills on point and take advantage of the Always 100 basketball camps. The Holiday Hoops Developmental Camp is for ages pre-K through 8th grade. You'll work on shooting, dribbling, passing, and defense December 24th through January the 2nd on Tuesday. And Alongside Mike Geely, I'm Sean McBride. We're broadcasting live from Eastside High School in the waning moments of this contest where the Blazers are on top of the Bishop Lures Knights 13-6. 151 remaining in the contest, and the Blazers are facing a third and 11 from the Bishop Lures 34-yard line. Lures has now spent two of their uh, timeouts. They have one remaining. And now Eastside after the timeout on third and long. Here's a snap. Bootleg to the right side. He loses some traction. Pressure coming as the quarterback gets hit and goes down. There is a flag. Going to be holding, I think, against yeah. the Blazers there, Sean. And uh, that will mark it back another 10 yards But uh, if they accept the penalty. You know, this field is in... I, I won't say it's as bad as Zollner Stadium, but, boy, it's close. I mean, it's taken a beating. was not in good shape before this contest, and yeah. it is certainly a wreck right now. No, and it's been all Blazers on this field in the second half coming out. The Knights just could not establish any kind of consistent offense, and the big interception turned the tide for the Blazers. And, uh, you know, the Knights might end up declining this to... Uh, Give them fourth and long. Exactly. Yeah. Versus another play and more time off the clock with time being the valuable element right now. Yeah, we're under two minutes to go. 144 exactly on the clock right now. Knights trailing by seven. This fourth down uh, situation, the hold is going to be against the side. It will be declined, so that will bring up a fourth and 11 now for east side. And one would assume they're going to try and cough and corner kick here, pin the Knights back deep, and give them a probably long field a long field and one last chance, honestly, yes. uh, to, to score here. Can Eastside hold on so, to this seven-point lead? So they can start the clock? Because he, he didn't accept the penalty. Okay, he did not. Yeah, so they wind the clock, and now it continues to tick down. And if in punt situation, they'll just take it down. They'll probably even just go ahead and take the delay of game penalty sure. here. Gives I would. Room. Gives yeah. you more room to punt it. And that stops the clock with 119 to go. They went ahead and called timeout they prior called to the, the timeout. Snap. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and step out for a 30-second break ourselves. This is High School Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Holy Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Keep your skills on point and take advantage of school where the Blazers are looking to finish out a tremendous second-half effort, leading the Knights right now 13-6. to They're in a, uh, a punt situation here. They did take a uh, timeout, so they've got two left remaining, with 119 remaining in the contest. No men back deep so far for the Bishop Lures Knights. As Eastside lines up in that long shotgun formation, as their quarterback looks to... Do a coffin corner kick. He gets it up high in the air. It doesn't go very far. Takes a Bishop Lures bounce and will be spotted up inside the 15 at about the 14-yard line. So 86 yards to go for the Bishop Lures Knights to try and get back in this. 
with 111 remaining in the contest, and they only have one timeout remaining. They have one timeout remaining, and they've got a long way to go and a tough field uh, to accomplish it on. So they've they got to keep their footing. they got to give Carson time. The offensive line's got to come together here, allow him an opportunity to see the field and see what they can do and use the sideline as much as possible to get out of bounds. Carson Clark, the sophomore quarterback, mixed reviews tonight on his performance. He's shown uh, real signs of greatness, but also two key interceptions tonight as well. One a 70-yard pick six. Here he is on first and ten. Looks to throw, looks to throw, fires. He's got it and nearly picked off again. He was trying to go for Jamie Johnson, who was doing a curl route to the outside, and it was incomplete. Great break on the ball there by the defender and stepped in front of it, and it was almost the third interception of the night right there out of the get-go. And that defender was Wade Miller. Of course, he was a huge, uh, you know, the receiver that time. He yeah. caught that huge over-the-top pass. Explosive speed out of yeah. that defensive back wide receiver. So an incomplete pass stops it with 107 remaining and brings up second and 10. Ball at the 14-yard line. Look for Carson maybe to go to Hedgecock on this one. Here's a snap. He looks to throw, has time, throws out to the flats. He's got his man. Looks to make a move, getting a first down and getting out of bounds to stop the clock. Scotty Van Landingham on Lanningham. the far side of the field. He's had a game. He has. I think that's his third or fourth reception for the Knights. And he moved the sticks and all important also got out of bounds. So that right. stops the clock for the Knights. All right. So he's out past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Two wide outs to the left side on the open side of the field, working off the right hash mark, one wide to the right. From the shotgun, rolling left, rolling left, rolling left. He now has to tuck it and run. He's trying to get out of bounds. He does not get out of bounds. Wait a minute. Okay. Incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. So, you know, he tried multiple times, pump fake, pump fake, and right before he went down, he threw the ball into the ground, and he had a wide receiver in the area. Wow. So they're going to rule it as an incomplete pass and stop the clock with 50 seconds. Did not even see him release the ball. So yeah. apologies yeah. there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Right at the last second as he was going down. Major heads-up play that time by uh, the sophomore quarterback, stopping the clock with 50.7 seconds remaining. Second and 11 now for the uh, Bishop Lures Knights. Jay McJohnson and Hedgecock on the near side. They are two wideouts split on the left side. Now we've got a flag on the play. Delay game. Delay game against the Bishop Lures Knights. Wow. Well, that came in late. That was a late flag, late whistle after the snap, but he must have saw something with the clock, obviously, to throw the flag. Well, the momentum is clearly on the side of the Blazers right now. The uh, fans are on their feet. They've got 49 seconds to victory, and Bishop Lures with another mistake on board. And now they're facing a second and 16. The ball now resting at their own 20-yard line. Ramon Anderson, the single setback, two wideouts to the left side, one wide right. Here's a snap. He's got backside pressure, throwing screen. backside. Ramon Anderson on the screen. Get gets to the bounds. 20, gets out of bounds after a short gain. Out to about the 23. It's really coming down to now, Sean. Uh, not only is it, you know, they got to get the first down with 42 seconds to go, but they got to get some yardage here. Right. they got a long way to go and a short time to get there. They do. Brings up a third and about 13 now for the Bishop Lures Knights with 42 seconds remaining. Clearly two down territory. Clark in the shotgun. Here's the snap. Looks to throw. Looks to throw. Fires. He's got it. The hitch and run. The uh, ball is up to 30. The 35 gets out of bounds near the 40. Thrown out of bounds. Oh. That's going to be a uh, unnecessary roughness against the defender against Cam Hedgecock. It is. What a, what a hook and ladder play there by the Knights. We saw it earlier in the season. Great job there between Jay McJohnson, who made the initial catch, and then the pitch to Hedgecock. Hedgecock got to the edge. He had some room to run, got to the sticks, and then as he was thrown out of bounds late, flag comes in. They're going to attack on another 15 yards. So he was jettisoned at the 42-yard line, and that's where they will start the walk-off of 15 yards. That's going to take the ball into east side territory, down to about the 43. So 33.3 seconds remaining. Corey Kitchen, what do you have for us? I think we're getting down to a time period here where they've got to take some shots down the field. I think the middle of the field, post routes, et cetera, but they've got to take some shots. On first and 10, now into east side territory from the 43-yard line. 
Clark on the shotgun, two wideouts to the right side, looking, looking, firing to the outside. It is caught. Van Lanningham Van again. Van again. Making a living along the sideline with the quick outs. And that will be, enough. should be enough yes. for a first down. They do move the chains. Ball now resting in between the 32 and 33 yard line of east side. Apparently didn't get out of bounds though, so the Knights got to go quick here with the clock running under 20 seconds. And he doesn't know the clock is running. He's taking his time back here. Here's a snap. He looks to throw, looks to throw, looks to throw. Pulls it, rolls to the outside, still looking to throw. Back towards the middle and nowhere in the middle of the field. And a flag comes out. No wide receivers anywhere in the vicinity. Had a lot of linemen downfield, but right. he didn't have any wide receivers near where the pass went. So that's going to be a loss of down, which right now with eight seconds to go is not as big a problem as the fact that Really tough clock management there yeah. for the Knights as they lost valuable seconds getting that playoff. Exactly right. I think they thought the receiver was out of bounds and the clock was stopped. Otherwise, you get up and you get under center and you clock the ball and, and live to learn another play. Yeah. Well, they didn't do any of those things, unfortunately, Mike. And now they've basically got one play left. That's what they've got. They've got eight seconds to go here. And, uh, again, the, uh, the penalty was an illegal man downfield. So they'll mark that one off five, back out to the 38-yard line. And this is what it comes down to right now. Eight seconds to go, east side 13, Bishop Lewis six. Trips package to the right side, one wide left. Carson Clark in the shotgun. Deep coverage for east side. Here's a snap, looking to screen, looking to screen. Has pressure, sacked. That's going to do it. About do it. Will they ever call it? They cannot call a timeout. The game is over. East side beats Bishop Lures in second round sectional action here at Butler. 13 to 6 is your final score. We're going to step out for a one minute break. When we come back, we'll have your post game report. You're listening to High School Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field, dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit Parkview Sports medicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors Give your home the curb appeal it deserves and trust Kirk's Meal to power wash your home. Additional services include concrete ceiling, deck and fence cleaning, driveway replacement, and stamped concrete. Just head on over to KurtzMeal.com. Request your virtual quote and use the code Summit City for 15% off all power washing services today. That's KurtzMeal.com, supporting the youth of Fort Wayne. Looking for a way to naturally aid in soothing aches, pains, and sore muscles and reduce inflammation from the skin? Want a relief in minutes? Try Alleviate. Contact Hillary Didier for details. You can find her at didier.hillary at gmail.com or call her at 260-312-1599. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. 
Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Parkview Ortho Express, located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, gives you access to quick care and orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Parkview Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. Developing athletes to be foundationally strong. Healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any age, any skill level. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. Thank you for supporting Summit City Sports. For the last several years, we've provided the Fort Wayne community and beyond with coverage of a variety of sports, thanks to our title sponsorship from Parkview Sports Medicine. Since we began in 2015, our annual budget has covered the cost of videographers and commentators to over 300 plus games each year. New equipment and maintenance of that equipment, along with increased broadcast rights fees from the IHSAA. This season, we're reaching out to friends, families, and local businesses for additional sponsorships and donations. You can help us grow and get coverage to your favorite team or sport. A Summit City Sports sponsorship or donation will help make that happen. We have the goal of bringing fans live stream games of every SAC game we cover. With the additional funds, we'd invest in mobile internet devices, allowing us to bring our supporters every SAC conference football, and boys and girls basketball games live, as well as more coverage for sports like cross country, tennis, golf, swimming, wrestling, track and field, baseball, and softball. For more information on sponsorships or how to donate, visit summitcitysports.com.